start on the back straightaway. That is it for AFT singles. In practice, 18 of Maxwell has the quick time. Cody Cop second, Brandon Kitchen third, Trent Lois fourth, Shayna Texter Bauman is fifth, Dallas Daniels, Mikey Rush, Morgan Mishler, Ryan Wells, and Kevin Stallings round out your top ten. Doing a little practice start on the back straightaway. Up next will be our production twins practice session. One round of practice for the production twins. Corey Texter, a huge points lead. He said he's never won an AFT race in the state of Pennsylvania. He wants to do it tonight. Is that right? Well, him and Shane, this is like their hometown, right? Their home track? It's probably the closest one they're going to have all season long. So Corey Texter is going to lead them out. Here they come. It's production twins. 65, Corey Texter. 79, Dalton Gauthier. This is his home track for sure. 49, Chad That's Coast. Right. 62, Dan Bromley on his birthday today. 25 is Ben Lau. 68 is Ryan Barnes, another Pennsylvania rider. Cameron Smith. Johnny Lewis, Danny Eslick, and Pat Buchanan. Storylines, Corey Texter in control, way out in front. Dalton Gauthier is solid in second place right now. The mid-pack having a lot of learning curves, trying to get consistent. So the middle-pack riders have been up and down. Everybody's trying to get that figured out, trying to work their way back up to catching up to Corey Texter, our points leader on that G&G &G racing Yamaha. That G&G &G Yamaha has been solid all year. It's just like bulletproof. All right, so how, how tough is it to be a points leader, a 31 points lead, but still try to go out there and be fast every week? I mean, are you on cruise control right now, or you still want to win? No, you got to win. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity yeah. to be in the points <laughs> lead, so I can't you know, speak from experience. But for sure, I mean, he's a racer. You want to win. You you start getting into defense mode and start protecting, and uh, that's when you, you'll, you'll make mistakes, and you just got to go out there and bring your A-game every single time. He pulls over right now and lets Dalton Gauthier go on by. I think that's a smart move because Gauthier was fast all day yesterday on the 79 Boswell Harley Davidson. So a uh, nice move right there. I think a smart move for Corey Texter, but uh, Dalton says, you can go on back by me. He goes, I don't think I'm going to show you all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Texter out in front to 65. Chad Coase is the quick time so far here in practice. 25.316. Corey Texter, Dalton Gauthier up there in second. Ben Lau fourth, the Holly Hot Rod. Johnny Lewis, the Royal Infield, the most recent winner on the circuit. He's back there in fifth on that Royal Infield, number 10. Just practice for you folks joining us. Look at that. Running the bottom of the racetrack over here. Corey's been trying all different kind of lines. So now high, Dalton looks up the inside as we slide back to Ben Lau and the birthday boy Dan Bromley out there, the 6'2. He stands about six foot three, but he's number 62. Yeah, the rear wheels are yeah, a little bit slipping around slipping a little out. bit, Tommy. Yeah. Gautier goes by Corey Texter. I think that was when they're taking the checkered flag. Yep, they're off the pace a little bit, so they'll stop on the back straightaway. Some of them looks like they're gonna keep on going, so. I guess some of those guys don't think they need a practice start. I don't think Corey needs any practice starts. He's, he is I think he's got shot the whole shot every race. Yeah. Yamaha comes off the line, and Corey's got great reflexes. He's, you can always count on him. So Chad Coast is our quick time, 25.316 right now. 25.316 for Chad Coast. Corey Texter second. Gautier's third. Ben Lau is fourth. Johnny Lewis fifth. Dan Bromley, Pat Buchanan, Danny Eslick, Ryan Barnes, and Cam Smith. So a couple more PA guys back there, ninth and tenth, trying to get a hold of this racetrack. Uh, up next will be group number two. Oh, Dallas Daniels is right here. I didn't see him on the list, but he is out here coming out to lead group number two. Dallas Daniels on the 32. Jeffrey Lowry, 223. Casey Cisco 161. Nick Armstrong on the 60 bike. Brandon Newman on the 90. 117, Jordan Harris. 116, Garrett Wilson. 30 bike, Brock Swartzenbacher. The 22 is Mitch Harvitt. Did you get a chance in the pits to check out Nick Armstrong's bike? Yeah, it's a good-looking motorcycle. He actually rode it last week during the Flat Track Grand Championships uh, on the half mile. And he went there just to shake it down. It's a good-looking motorcycle. I mean, he engineered the frame. Yeah. He's so the, smart. He is he's just brilliant. Absolutely. Engineered. 223, Jeffrey Lowry out there. That's who, actually, that is Dallas Daniels on the screen right now. Our 2020 AFT singles champ. He's got number 32 because he didn't win the championship in this class. Uh, so he cannot run the number one plate in this class. He'll be number one on the, on the singles bike.
Dallas Daniels on the back straight of the 32, but he's up to eighth quick so far, 26.034. Uh, Tommy, he doesn't have anybody to chase right now. He's in the lead, so you're, he's out there battling against the racetrack. How hard is that to do? I, sometimes, you know, you said earlier that the practice doesn't mean anything, but a lot of times for, for me back in the day, if I could get out front, it just it did something for him mentally as well. But the other hand, you don't have anybody to run with, so you don't know whether you're uh, on, on pace or not. First round of practice on the racetrack production twins. It's group number two. Everything's situated right now. Bill trained race motorcycles are coming up after this. There's the 32 of Dallas Daniels. He is currently in the eighth spot right now. Jordan Harris, the coal miner, is up there in the 11th position. Jordan Harris is, goes by Cameron Smith on the speed charts. Our second group, a little puff of smoke right there by the 16th bike. That is Garrett Wilson. A little bit of smoke. It's no big deal, right? No. <laughs> Keep going until it blows. He can't see it. <laughs> Checkered flag is already out. Dallas Daniels will take the advantage to stop on the back straightaway. I think that's a smart move because he doesn't ride this class normally, but he's going to stop back there and do a little bit of practice start. Daniels will stop to the practice start. Jeffrey Lowry pulling up next. Here comes Nick Armstrong. All right, let's go down trackside and check in with Kristen B. Kristen, how are you doing? Scotty, Scotty thanks so much. As uh, these bikes head to exit, I know it's Dallas Daniels uh, taking the exit right now. Um, earlier in the day, I, I had a chance to check in with him, and I asked him with the title in the singles class being so close, he's literally tied with Max Whale, if that would negate his decision to run this production twins class. He's not worried about it at all. These guys are in such good shape and train all season. Running two classes shouldn't be heavy lifting for Dallas Daniels, who feels so confident on that production twins bike. If you remember, he made his debut earlier this season in Atlanta. He won that production twins race. So uh, today, easy lifting for Dallas Daniels, despite the fact he's running double duty. All right, pulling up to the track right now is the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. These are the women on the motorcycles that they have built. There's eight of them. We had nine of them at Joliet. One of them still injured right now. She is on the road to recovery. There's th Sarah, 13 of Sarah Dixon getting the uh, blast off the line out there. 909 is Aaron Ferris. She is the scratch. Uh, 31, Jill Deshane. 33 is J.C. Jones. Mallory Lee's on the six. LeBaire on the 21. Casquella's on the 27. 327 is Hughes, and 88 is Lana McNaughton. They're getting their first laps out here today. We'll have Bree Poland up here with Royal Enfield a little bit later on to fill in. But, Tommy, how impressive is it these women have built their motorcycles? They all have the same budget, and now they're out here racing their bikes again for the second time this season. It's awesome. In, in fact, uh, uh, Sarah Dixon, we've got a little special place in our heart for the for her. We've uh, sponsored with Moto Zilli, uh, Jimmy Acazelli, uh, and uh, helped uh, with the leathers. So we got TDFJ on uh, on Sarah's leathers. That's cool. And yesterday the bike had no spark. She was stressed out. She couldn't get the bike to fire up. Uh, it hasn't slowed her down. She looks no. pretty good so far. She's in top spot. And she comes from great stock, right? Her dad, Rob uh, Gessner, fast, fast racer. Number 45. That's why she has the 45 on her leathers too as well. There's a good battle right here. Now J.C. Jones goes to the top spot, the 33 bike. 28.355. That's a pretty quick yeah, lap. They're not far off the pace of the the guys. Sarah Dixon right there second. Shield to Shane back in third. Gaskella in fourth. McNaughton back in fifth right now. Mallory Lee, LaBear, and Gabby Hughes in the eighth spot. And this is just their practice session. There's one full round of practice for every class today. And then we get into qualifying. Uh, the ladies will have their main event a little bit later on. Then during the open paddock area, Tommy, Ricky Rackman's going to be down there interviewing all these ladies, talking about their bikes, talking about their builds. And it'll be shortly after their main event, actually, during the open pit area. It's a great story. And uh, the Royal Infield, for the money, uh, for a street bike, for whether it be an entry level for a guy or a girl, it's, 
It's a great motorcycle. Man, they look like a lot of fun. Ricky Rackman's talking about getting one. Yeah, then you'll have to get one, and you'll have to have a little grudge match. White flag is out. J.C. Jones still in the top spot here in practice, the 33 bike. Uh, she was just in second almost all day long yesterday. How about Sarah Dixon? Didn't get to practice like, like all. all the rest of these ladies did yesterday. She's up there currently second here in this practice session. 33 at the top spot, 28.355. Checkered flag is out. I don't know if these ladies will stop on the back straight, but they actually stopped on the starting line. Gave them a little bit of a practice start right here. So, all right. So that is it for our entire first round of practice out here at the Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. We come back, it'll be time for qualifying. Hold on to your burritos because things are about to get too fast, too tasty. Mission Foods is a proud sponsor of the AFT Super Twins. Add Mission to your race-watching snacks for mouth-watering race day flavors. Mission Foods. Too fast, too tasty. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under 4 minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. We're the Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. We understand the challenges riders face every day. As riders, we want to share the road and be seen by motorists. Remaining visible is critical to our safety and well-being. That's why we work tirelessly to promote motorcycle safety and awareness. We're proud to support our community that includes riders of all stripes. If you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS or visit lawtigers.com. The Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. The race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Donlop is proud to be the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. What we learn from racing is rolled into our production tires, such as the Dunlop K180. A street legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. With the K180, street riders can now have the authentic flat track tire experience. No other tire company has won more American motorcycle championships than Dunlop. MobileView has been providing state of the art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. I'll tell you what a pleasant surprise it is. A little bit shocked to show up at the track at Port Royal and see Sammy Halbert here who is recovering from an injury and horrible coordination because his boots don't even match. I don't know what's up with that. I want to start off by saying I saw your Instagram video. I could only watch about the first 20 seconds of it. So tell me what the injury was. Yeah, so I broke four metatarsals. I think broke and displaced four metatarsals. So basically broke most of my toe bones. And, and I did a good job of it, too. I mean, you hit a wall at 100 with, with clip an edge with your foot. You can imagine the damage done. So, um, yeah, it's been a brutal injury. Um, yeah. That's what happened. You kind of showed up here the way you left the last race because you got hurt in the Mission Challenge, I believe, hit the wall, and then when we went to go talk to you, your truck was already gone, and now we show up here not expecting to see you, and you're here racing, and during practice, you look good. Yeah, no, I wasn't planning on coming. Like, I mean, I just got the pins removed from my foot, um, like, I don't know, a week or so ago. Um, so I was planning on waiting till New York. But uh, as soon as I got the pins out, the, the, it really started to progress. Um, and, and I was able to work out and, like, getting the blood flowing and working out. And then 
I put a motocross boot on. I'm like, ah, the boot fits. I mean, what, what do you do? And then, and then I got on my, my, my little Grom and like tested it out. And as soon as I got back on a motorcycle, I was like, ah, just felt so at home. I need to, I just felt like I, I need to go now. Um, so I was really, really on the fence about it. Didn't decide till I think Wednesday night. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully all goes well, and hopefully I don't look like an idiot at the end of this deal. I mean, so far, so good. I'm, I'm quick and competitive in practice, and, and and it's not hurting to ride or anything like that. Just just need to be careful and not uh, not crash or not get meased out there. So, Are you in any kind of pain right now? No, I mean, having the boot on is a little tight, and um, and taking it on and off is a little bit of an uh, could be an issue. Um, so trying to keep it elevated and keep the swelling down uh, and stuff like that. But uh, But, yeah, so far, so good. Okay, let's be honest here for a second. This is a performance-driven sport. Job security is when you're out there and you're performing well. When DeCoin happened, and I don't know if this has any factor at all, and there was a possibility maybe Carver right on your team, does it kind of say, like, A, I'm glad it rained, and B, I got to get out there and show, like, I'm still a factor? Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, I've been doing this for so long. Like, I, I know my place, and uh, and I'm trying to better it, of course, but... Um, I mean, it would have been cool to see Carver on the on the bike. You don't mean that. I mean, honestly, it would have been interesting to to see what he could do on it, and 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 if he did well, you know, you know, regardless, it, you know, could have tried to use it for motivation to fire me up even more. So, um, but but yeah, Jeffrey didn't run a race this weekend, I guess, and um, my team wasn't planning on going, but uh, my team's pretty close by, so we thought, you know, with with all the rule changes that took place coming into this event um, and this Friday practice session, which is so valuable, it's like let's let's go, let's, let's practice Friday, see how it goes, play it smart, um, and. And see what happens. So just getting my laps in this weekend, trying to play it smart. And um, if, con if conditions, if I make it to the main and decide to race the main, if conditions are right, um, then you know maybe I can roll up towards the top three. But but we'll see. It's nice going in with no expectations. Just just get my laps in and, and try and learn with like there was a lot of rule changes with this deal. So so see where we're at with that and understand the setup and stuff. So I, so far I'm really really glad I did. I've actually already learned a lot today. Felt like we changed the setup a bit from where I've been running it for, for the last, like, two years or whatever. And I'm like, man, that seems a lot better. So, so far, so good. And so far, ha so far I'm happy I'm ca I came. But, uh, like I said, hopefully I don't look like an idiot at the end of this. We don't think you all will. We're really glad to see Sammy Halbert back out on the track. And we're hoping good things. And see you in the main, maybe the podium tonight. We can only hope. It's amazing. Sammy Halbert's out here racing at the Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. Just not too far out of getting his pins out of his feet. He is currently fifth in our first round of practice. When we come back, we got a little short break still. We'll be back on the racetrack in about 15 minutes out here at the Port Royal Half Mile. We'll be right back. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and a setting sun, then you owe it to yourself to check out Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we've been making dreams come true for over a decade. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's Trackside Merchandise Booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. The rookies of 79 are former racers and champions of the sport who reunited in 2009 to form the official charity for American Flat Track. Ten years and over $1.7 million raised for our injured racers. Visit Rookies79.com to see how you can help. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best in class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. A special thank you to Jake's Golf Carts for their support of American Flat Track Racing. If you're in need of a golf cart, call Jake's Golf Carts for a special racing discount. You'll see why Jake's Golf Carts are known throughout the world for being America's home for custom carts.
come to Port Royal Speedway, racing every Saturday night. Visit the website, portroyalspeedway.com, for the full schedule, or visit us on Facebook at Port Royal Speedway Trackside Media. On Friday and Saturday, August 13th and 14th, Progressive American Flat Track roars to Wheat Sports Speedway in upstate New York. You see how bad these guys want it. In event for all ages, Weed Sports Speedway is hosting two nights of racing as the world's fastest dirt track racers battle bar to bar for victory. The Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycles doubleheader on August 13th and 14th. And welcome back to Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. It is beautiful country up here. If you haven't been up here, come check it out. Bring your motorcycle. Get some road riding in. There's all kinds of beautiful scenery. Ricky Rackman and I went for a nice drive last night and checked it all out. And speaking of Ricky Rackman, you've you've seen him on MTV. He used to be the host of Headbangers Ball. It's 40 years ago, Ricky. Man, he's getting old. We'll have to check him out now. He's with one of my favorite guys down there. Let's go to Ricky Rackman. It was not 40 years ago, Scotty, okay? Hey, everybody, hope you're doing good. Uh, right now, I am joined with my good friend, Charlie Roberts. He's at all the races with Rookies of 79, which is an incredible uh, organization, and he's got something that we are auctioning here tonight that everybody that's at the racetrack can participate in, but you people online as well. First of all, Charlie, tell us real quick a little bit about Rookies of 79. Well, Ricky, as you know, the charity uh, is made of racers from, again, we were all rookies in 1979, Wayne Rainey, Scott Parker, myself, Ronnie Jones, and we came together. We've remained friends since we were 16 years old, and we came together to give something back to the sport that we love. And what we decided to do was be benevolent and help riders when they're injured. So over a million dollars uh, since our inception, and it continues to grow because of you and because of the fans. And every race, there's something really cool that we have a raffle for. And why don't you tell us what we're raffling off tonight? Tonight we're doing, this is a Scott Parker, nine-time Grand National Champion, 94-1. Scott Jacobs was the premier uh, artist of American Flat Track or of Flat Track Racing. And he done this. This is a special numbered, never-to-be-reproduced print of Scott Parker, nine-time Grand National Champion. We're selling raffle tickets in the grandstand tonight, $5 for one, or you get six for $20. We will poll the winner tonight. Um, and again, priceless. I don't know if you put a value on it. They sell for two, three thousand dollars. So uh, it'd be pretty cool to win it for twenty bucks. And it is such a good cause because it helps injured riders out there. So when you're walking around the midway, definitely go check out the rookies of '79 tent. And there are people that are watching right now live. They can get a raffle ticket. We're going to draw this tonight. How do they get a raffle ticket? I'll be walking through the grandstand to get my raffle ticket. If you're watching at home, go to rookie79.com, R-O-O-K-I-E-S, 79.com. You can purchase tickets online. We'll send you pictures of your actual tickets. We'll pull the, me and Ricky will pull the ticket tonight or somebody. I ain't touching it. We'll pull it tonight before the Twins main event. And if it's your number, uh, we'll get a hold of you and you win. Very good. Good luck. I think you guys need to do this. Such a great cause and so much cool stuff, too. Back to you, my friend, Scotty. Happy 60th birthday. Thanks, Ricky. I appreciate it. Speaking of 60, Charlie Roberts just won the, the Masters Class Champion at the Amateur Grand National Championships. He rode an XR750 and took home the National Championship. He's the number one 60-plus rider in the country. Congratulations to Charlie. He won his first ever Grand National Championship. So earlier this year, we ran our first Royal Enfield Bill Train race feature. It was actually at the Joliet Half Mile. Let's take a look back a few weeks ago to the Royal Enfield race. We're in Chicago, Route 66 Raceway. We're all working on our bikes. This is the first AFT race for the ladies, and we're just trying to get them dialed in. Um, and I'm excited to see how they turn left. It's like a big, small town. There's nothing here. I'm from the West Coast, so there's usually buildings and cities everywhere. I think there's a cornfield over here, but I'm also from the Midwest originally, so no surprise there. This is going to be a really fast racetrack. The corners are honestly wider than a road race course even. Get the race now! <laughs> <laughs>
a little intimidated by it. It's definitely bigger in person than you think of a half mile. COVID delaying parts, so not everyone's getting the things we need, and then no practice on the bikes. Let's hope we can look good in front of national television. What you gonna do? Yesterday was a whirlwind, literally, figuratively, all the things. It was super cold, super windy, but in the end, I think it was good because there was a couple things on my bike that I really needed to work on, and so that gave me the time to prep for today, and I'm stoked on that. Watching the other women yesterday, I felt really bad that their shakedown session got canceled. I think everyone's a little nervous today. You know, we all have different levels of anxiety going into today. Yesterday didn't really go as planned, but still wanted to have fun with it. So got up in some tires and still look for uh, my leaning tower of Minza. So Jillian picked up the Dunlop tires and was doing some cross training at first, you know, flipping and getting all intense. But then she got into the hula hooping, which I really feel like the movement of the hips is going to help her on the corners and getting up on her seat. Just, she's, she's killing it with the strategy out here. It's so nice to have professional photographers so that we can focus on what we're doing and not be focused on having to get the content. It's been pretty cool to give these women the whole media experience to have them in front of the camera you know lights action the whole deal it's been pretty cool it's been fun we showed up today in joliet and the skies are clear it's it's sunny it's gorgeous couldn't ask for better weather today right now it's looking like cake batter so i really like the look of it and hope it dries out a little bit more and they're i think they're cleaning it up Getting the groove on. I'm ready to go. Up next, it is our first race of the evening. It's the Royal Infield Build Train Race Semifinal. Flat track racing is family to me just because, you know, you show up and you might have a problem and there's 15 people standing around who want to help. And you show up maybe with like knowing one or two people and leaving with like a family of 30. Going fast, turning left. The fast part scares the crap out of me. Scary, but so much fun. Y you want to be able to hold it as wide open as you can, but sometimes on those turns, you got to let off, and it's just getting back on and off as soon as possible. It always pushes you to go faster into a turn and come out better than you did the last lap. How they finish in the semifinal will give them their starting lineup for their main event. So this is the Royal Infield Build Train Race main event. Lined up and ready to go there on Royal Infield's INT 650s. It's our first main event. And light turns green to 06 from the inside. I'm grabbing the whole shot. Mallory Lee will take him to the first corner. The 33 is all the way up to second place from the third row. That is J.C. Jones from California. Here's a battle back here for third and fourth. It's the 13 bike, and she's got her hands full with the 909. Aaron Ferris is keep, keeping up with the 13 of Sarah Dixon. They're three wide up in turn number two. Deshane goes from third to the lead down the back straightaway. Let's give it up for Julie Deshane and all the girls that rode on Ladies of Road and Build Train Race.
And the Royal Enfield Bill Train Race Program is back with us here at American Flat Track for round number two. Also, after the or when, during the open paddock area, Ricky Rackman is going to talk to all of the ladies who have built their motorcycles and ask them all kinds of questions. Uh, we got a beautiful shot here today. It's beautiful weather outside. There's fans actually filling up the infield right now. A lot of people already showing up early for round number eight of the Progressive American Flat Track Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson's. I'm Scotty Dibbler. Now we're out in the paddock area, roaming around somewhere. I think he's actually out front. Ricky Rackman, I think I heard his feelings. I think he's trying to find a ride home. <laughs> well, you know, Scotty, uh, I am a motorcycle enthusiast. As a matter of fact, last week I rode my motorcycle from Charlotte to Coin, And the one race that I decided not to ride to, this one, a lot of people did. And there's so many great motorcycles. And you see all the brands represented, the Harleys, the Indians, the Triumphs, the BMWs, the Royal. And here's a really cool shovel head i'm guessing maybe 67 but there's so many cool motorcycles here and i appreciate it when all the guys and girls ride their motorcycles here to the uh, progressive american flat track and if you're walking around you can walk out it's like it's like a free motorcycle show going on right now Getting set to go with round number eight. Up next will be our Mission Super Twins practice session. They're actually getting two rounds of practice today. I was wrong earlier. We thought we were coming back to qualifying, but Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycles, they'll get one more round of practice today. They practiced all day long yesterday. There's some rule changes. We'll get into a little bit more of that a little bit later on when the bullet Brad Baker joins us up here in the booth. I'm Scotty Dubler. I've mentioned that a few times in the booth. Now with me, uh, part of the rookies of 79, also our official jeweler of American Flat Track, Tommy Duma. Tommy, a beautiful day so far. As we take a look at the point standings, we got three riders up top, and they all have some some kind of relationship to Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very cool that uh, it, it has worked out that way, for sure. Home state, home dirt, maybe they, you know, that's uh, something back to their youth, riding these types of racetracks. So Briar Baum is actually from California, so I think this is a racetrack that's kind of similar to some racetracks out in California. Right. So Briar does live now in Pennsylvania. He's our points leader. Brand Robinson is from Oxford, Pennsylvania. The top three have two wins apiece, and also our third place rider right now. He's down there a little bit in the point standings, but you can never count out the jammer, Jeremy. He is originally from Pennsylvania, now lives in Florida in the in the winter time, and still lives up in Michigan in the summertime. So uh, top three all have Pennsylvania. A relationship somehow Root, roots back to to PA, yeah. Briar now he's uh, he's a Pennsylvanian by uh, by marriage. There you go. <laughs> so, how how nice is it to be back in Pennsylvania racing at the top level? You guys used to race back here back in the day a lot. Uh, we were at Williams Grove the last couple of years, and now we're we're moving up the road up here to Port Royal. But how nice it, is it to be back in Pennsylvania? Yeah, it's great for me. It's uh, just about a three and a half hour drive from Ohio uh, to come here, and uh, so really enjoyed those close races for me. For sure, I love the, the, the track, the dirt. Is, like you said, reminds me of uh, Hagerstown. A little bit of Weedsport. Yeah, it looks awful fast and awful, awful fun to me. It's group number one. There's one group of super twins. This is their second round of practice right now. The one is Briar Bauman. 44 is Robinson. 9 is Jared Meese. 20 is Van Decoy. 95 J.D. Beach. 92 Brandon Price was very fast yesterday. The 37 uh, Bronson Bauman. 36 Colby Carlisle. 67 Davis Fisher. 27 Robbie Pearson. 43 is James Rispoli. 69 making his return is Sammy Halbert. Larry Pegram was actually quick time later on yesterday. Yeah, he had fast time at the end of the session. That's crazy. The worm. He's my age. Right, go that for the old guys. That means I can do it. I like that. It's like Pat Buchanan out there. What do you get for winning practice, though, Tommy? Nah, just uh, something happens mentally. That you, you know, you you are out front. You feel good. Confidence. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right. This is our second round of practice for the Super Twins. Brandon Price goes to the top spot. A two four point nine eight four. Only bike in the twenty four second range right now. Fastest time in practice group number one was a forty four Robinson, and he is currently second quick two five point zero one five. Just a hair off the leader's time right now. There's a look at the, looks like the 27 of Bugs Pearson. He had mechanical issues uh, at the last round. Round number seven was the Lima half mile. Didn't even uh, complete a lap in that main event. So there's a good battle down the back straightaway. Who's that? Looks like Bronson. No, that's Price. Price pulls the front wheel. Real. He's getting plenty of traction. Yeah. Goes up the inside of Colby Carlisle. Looks like on the SNCM. Or is that JD Beach? That is Beach on the 95. Those two bikes are identical. White flag is already out quick, fast, and in a hurry. Five laps this session out here. Brand Price at the top spot. That is the 92 bike here in our second round of practice. 24.984, so about six tenths off of the first 
session of practice for the Super Twins. Brand Brandon was fast yesterday as well. He had a lot of the top times in the sessions. There is a bunch of lines out there on the racetrack. I love that you can go in low, you can go in high. So the riders were right in the middle of the racetrack uh, yesterday. Where do you think the preferred line is going to end up later on, Tommy? I, are, are, are you like a Nostradamus? Can you predict no. that? No, you know, it's, it's sometimes when it gets moisture comes up and the groove starts to build, sometimes the groove is is where it's going to be slick. So you're, they're going to start chasing some of the just chase the, the moisture. Yeah, chase the to where okay. it's. We'll right, either on, on, on the Let's front see. of the groove or on the back end of the groove. So some people go up the racetrack. Price getting, having a tough time getting that bike woe down. They go on and off the racetrack just outside turn. Oh. Watch out. Oh. Man, little, almost a little contact going off the racetrack. I wonder if somebody's not happy with the 92 of Brandon Price. <laughs> AFT singles qualifying round number one is up next. We have 28 total riders. How you get qualified will give you your starting lineup for your semifinals. Our semifinals will be right after opening ceremonies. Opening ceremonies here today is at 6 p.m. Eastern time. It is going to be short and sweet. We have one VIP we're going to talk to. We're going to pray. We're going to sing. And we're going to go racing at 610. We do have an open paddock area. The open pit area is 735. Singles are on the racetrack. Here's the point standings coming in. A tie on top of the uh, leaderboard right now. Maxwell, Dallas, Daniel, both with 126. Mikey Rush has slid back a little bit back there in third with 109. Henry Wiles, Morgan Mishler, Shane at Sexter Bauman. She's looking to rebound out here in her home state of Pennsylvania. This is qualifying round number one, group number one of our AFT singles. Maxwell's on the 18th. Dallas Daniels on the 1. 15 is Mikey Rush. 17, Henry Wiles. 13, Morgan Mishler. 52, Shane at Sexter Bauman. 21, Trevor Bruner, 105, Brandon Kitchen, the 48, Trent Lowe, and the 143, that's Hot Rod, Cody Cobb. Shane is back up there, 25-7. There you go. Cop, and how quick it goes back. And then here comes Cody Cobb up to second, 25.778, so just three one-thousandths between second and third. That's, you can't even blink your eye that quick, Tommy. No, even for, well, one through ten are all very close together. There is Shane at Texter Bauman looking up the inside of Morgan Mitchell. Mr. No, follow anybody, the 13 bike. That guy will find another line no matter where we're at. If it doesn't matter for it's a skating rink or for a BMX race, he will find a different line. I love that about Morgan. And that's why he's always moving towards the front. He, you know, he just won't stay and follow anybody. I think I think you need to start a team, the TDFJ racing team, and, and, and a super twin and put Morgan Mitchell on the bike. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> I wish I had the money. Yep. You haven't won the lottery yet? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I keep right. playing. Morgan Mister going up the racetrack and looks like Shane Sexter Bauman's pulling away from him. Shane moves up to second to 5.361. Now we got the Suzuki at the top spot, the 48 bike, 25.247. Maxwell, Shane's teammate back there in the third spot. Cody Cop is fourth. Mikey Rush, Dallas Daniels back in sixth. So Dallas is being consistent. He's not winning as many races as he did last year, but he's still up there uh, as our points leader. Yeah, but if you look 25.2 to 25.5, I mean, it's it's really close we were in a race situation it would just depend on the whole shot and uh, these guys are all very competitive and when it's race time you step up your game a little bit absolutely, right absolutely white flag is out here in our first group of qualifying around number one there's two rounds of qualifying for all uh, four of our classes there's the uh, 48 bike trying the high line trying to get by one of the american hondas down the long front straightaway checkered flag is out it seems like the, the the finish line's a little ways further down the front straightaway yeah it's way down there right yeah i noticed that too it's like right almost going into the corner trent low at the top spot here in qualifying so far the 48 bike that's the wally brown racing uh rowdy energy suzuki 25.247 i'm writing it down tommy do you think i wrote it down too soon because we got two more groups you think anybody in the second or third group can get up there it's possible it's Anything's possible, possible Anything's flat possible. Track, right i'd put my money on trent all right, so Trent Lowe's our fast qualifier right now. Shane is extra Bauman second. Maxwell is third. Cody Kopp is fourth. Mikey Rush is fifth. Dallas Daniels is sixth. Brandon Kitchen, Morgan Mishler, Trevor Bruner, Henry Wiles. I, I think the hottest rider in the anti singles class is just not up to speed just yet here on the half mile. It's practice, so he still might be searching for something, trying some different gears. And that's the great thing about practice is that you can try some different lines so you can see where it's going to come into later on. But... Uh, you know, when it comes to qualifying and uh, when it comes to race, Henry will be there. All right, group number two rolls onto the racetrack. 19 is James Ott, 38 Tanner Dean, 99 Kevin Stallings, 124 Hunter Bauer, 26 Aiden Bruce Evans, 377 the Spanish flat track champ, Ferran Cardus, 94 is Ryan Wells, 161 Casey Cisco, and 55 Tyler Raggio. So 
Uh, I said earlier one rider's doing double duty. I was incorrect. Two riders are doing double duty. Dallas Daniels actually giving it a go in the production twins class as well. There's Raggio, the 55, filling in uh, for Cole Zabala on the Turner Racing uh, American Honda. Also still sponsored by his regular sponsors, Raggio Racing and Sluggo Racing on the 55 bike. It's a heck of an opportunity to get on a factory-backed motorcycle. Oh, it's an opportunity of a lifetime that he gets to go out there and show what he can do, and uh, then there could be possibilities uh, for a future sponsorship. Ferran Cardus out there as well. Ferran was here for the Bullet Brad Baker's wedding last weekend. Stuck around for another week to race with us. He got his first American speeding ticket on the way over here from Michigan. Yes, sir. yes he did. How about that? Yep. Uh, Brad Beth Baker said he finished first place in that in that category. <laughs> <laughs> he, and he finished the top of the charts last night too. I think at the front did as far as his times. Okay. In, in later I didn't in the stick day. around. I, I left last night a little bit yeah. early. Don't don't tell my boss, but I went down and play somewhere else away from here for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, he, he's got it going on. The 377, uh, I think this track's going to be a lot about throttle control, Tommy, and, and I think Ferran was figuring that out quickly. Yes, this is all about throttle control. Ferran's up to seventh, the 377 up to seventh, just as we mentioned that. James Ott, second quickest on the track. Kevin Stallings up to 14th on the 99 bike. Now Aiden Rusevens. Rusevens on a new ride. He's up there in the 13th spot. And he did good last night as well. He, he, he parted ways with the Waters Auto Body team. It just wasn't working out for the, he, uh, I don't think, either party. And so he is on Justin Jones's motorcycle right now. He had a, a sponsorship lined up for the uh, Southern Illinois Motorcycle Dealership. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But Ruth Evans up there in the 13th position. Tyler Raggio 16th. Bauer back in 18th. Casey Cisco is 19th. 19 bikes have been on the track so far here in our first round of qualifying for the AFT singles. There are three groups in this class. This is a big class, 28 total entries. Top six spots remain the same from group number one. As the checkered flag is coming out, looks like Raymond Rizzo out there, our assistant flag man right now. We're actually in his trailer right now. It's the Finding the Finish Community Center. If you want to help out Raymond Rizzo get to the races, check him out, findingthefinish.com. You could be an, an honorary pit member. Be on the pit crew, that's what he says. If you want to help support Raymond Rizzo, do get to the races. They had a, a church service earlier today because a lot of riders don't make it home to go to their normal church. So Raymond Rizzo is their pastor, and he says some words for them, and they pray. We will pray before the race, and Raymond Rizzo will be the one doing that as well. So when he's not taking care of riders, he's helping out down there with Big P at the start-finish line uh, with the flags and the lights and all that fun stuff. All, was, all, all the racers really respect Ray. He, absolutely. He does a great job. Great job. Uh, super yeah. nice guy. Absolutely. It's good to have him involved. Up next will be group number three of the AFT singles, 175 Taryn Santero, who is filling in for Andrew Luker on the uh, 175 Yamaha. 133 David Wigan. 135 Ezra Brusky. 243 is the Jet Jared Lowe. 298 Trent Pickle. They call him Sweet Heat. 109 is Billy Ross. 156 Jordan Jean. 157 Ian Wolf. The 103. That's Michael Hill. Those are the bikes coming to the racetrack right now. It's our AFT singles. First round of qualifying, it's the last group. After this, we'll go into the AFT Production Twins qualifying. They'll be already lined up. They'll be coming up next. Racing against the track right now and the clock. So you want to finish in the top, uh, let's see, the top 12 spots. Put yourself on a front row of, actually, I'm sorry, the top six, top eight spots. I'm all confused. Eight, top eight will be on the front row of the semifinal. Four, two semis. So you got to finish the top eight. We'll have four riders on each row. It's a little bit different. I like the four riders front row. It's, it's what it has done. Tommy is the four riders on the front row. It's prevented some of our first corner, first corner big pileups in the main events. To kind of spread them out just a little bit. These guys are nose to tail coming off a of turn number four. Taryn Santero gets up against the front straightaway wall. Has to pull the handlebars back. One of the riders dropping down to the bottom racetrack. I believe that might be the 55 trying the low line. Actually, 55 is in the last group. That might be the one, 135. On the back straightaway. No, it's the 243. It's Jared Lowe. Man, that's a big group of riders. I think I think I'd spread myself out a little bit. I mean, this is just practice, but maybe they want to see where they stack up. Yeah, they want to see if they're going to be able to move forward or where they're at with their gearing at the end of the straightaway. Santero looking pretty good on the Rackley Racing here and Racing Yamahas. Been filling in for the injured number 11, Andrew Luker, who's back in California right now on the mend. Had surgery on his thumb after the uh, accident coming off turn number two at Lima. Now, I like all the different lines here. You go to the yeah. bottom, right in the middle. You go to the high line. Last night, there was rubber from the top to the bottom. It doesn't look like he's taking as much rubber today. It might just be wait until uh, till the moisture comes up. 
Anderson goes down. It could be part of the, the cloud coverage out there, too. It could be the track's a little bit cooler, maybe, and it's not taking as much rubber. Right. And what a battle down the back straightaway. Santero, the 175. Here comes uh, David Wiggin up the inside, the 133. Michael Hill on the 103 is up to 20th. It's like the fastest bike on the racetrack. Three wide. Man, what a, these guys are going for it. It's just practice. Checkered flag is out right there. Brusky, the 135, moves into 16th. Jordan Jig up to 27th. 22nd, Billy Ross moves up to 21st. David Wiggin goes back to 23rd. That was it for our AFT singles first round of qualifying. Up next will be our AFT production first round of qualifying. Two rounds of qualifying. That was going to stop and do a little practice start. So after the first round, it's the 48 of Trent Lowe. Your quick time, 25.247. Shane Texter Bauman, second, 25.361. Max Wells, third. Tanner Dean, Cody Kopp. Mikey Rush back here, sixth. Veron Carduce, Ryan Wells, Dallas Daniels, and Kevin Stallings rounding out your top ten. So, Tommy, on a track, this is a question from the truck. On a track like this that's so slick, with a lot of traction control and throttle control, how do you start on a track like this? Uh, you just have to roll off the clutch. You know, today with, with a lot of the slipper clutches, that would help. But, uh, yeah, it's coming out slow to go fast. Let the clutch out slow to go fast is your answer. So, moving on to the AT Production Twins, presented by Vance and Hines class. Take a look at the point standing. Scoring texts are way out in front. Dalton Gauthier back in second. That's a huge march between first and second. Chad Coase closing in on Dalton Gauthier just a little bit. Now, Dan Bromley on his birthday back there in the fourth position. Ben Lau, Ryan Barnes, PA, Cameron Smith from Pennsylvania, John Lewis from Pennsylvania. Yeah, Danny Essek and Dylan Bell did not make the trip out here to the west, to the east coast from Kansas. So uh, that's a look at the point standings coming into round number eight. We're at the Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. This is our first round of qualifying for the production twins. Corey Texter goes to the top spot, 25.644. They're just getting up to speed, but that's got to feel good for him. As Dalton Gauthier was fast every session yesterday. Yeah, this is kind of this is Corey's track. He likes these uh, groove tracks, smooth. He's got good throttle control. And that G&G Yamaha is dialed in. It always is. And he gets the whole shot, so he job. might be the man to beat out here. He told me earlier today he has not won an AFT race in the state of Pennsylvania. I found that very hard to believe. He's trying to do so here tonight. Not too far from home. Lancaster, Pennsylvania is where the Texter family is from. Johnny Lewis gets by Barnes back here a little bit deeper in the field. Johnny Lewis goes by Barnes on the racetrack. And Johnny Lewis moves the Royal Infield up to fifth. He's our most recent winner at the Lima, Ohio Half Mile National. Barnes goes back to sixth. Pat Buchanan seventh. Bromley is eighth. Danny Eslick's on his own motorcycle. He bought a Kawasaki. That's what I heard on your podcast. Man. White flag is out. Last lap here in our first group. So Corey Texter, two five. That was his fastest lap right there. No, that was his best. I'm sorry. I thought that was his best lap on that last lap, but it was a little bit, a few laps to go. But Chad Coast right there, real close in second. It's 25.644 for Texter, 25.677 for Coast. 65. 25.67. So the track's about three tenths slower than it was in our first round of practice. Checkered flag is out. There's Johnny Lewis and Barnes. Again, two PA guys right there. Cameron Smith also out there on the 44 bike from Pennsylvania. These Pennsylvania fans are going to have a lot of riders to cheer for. For sure. How yeah. cool is that? That is very cool. It's awesome. It's, it's great that the spectators can go on the infield, too. It's, it's different. We'll take a look at a replay of the birthday boy, Dan Bromley, out here on the 62. We'll check it out. I might have missed it, but they got a good replay they're going to show us. Here it comes. Watch the 62 at the top of the racetrack. Feet on the pegs. Letting it all hang out. There's some body yeah. English right there. I think I got a picture of, of, a, of another number 62 about in that same position. Yeah. Yeah, that'd yeah. be you. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to do it maybe sometimes on the going into the corner, but you don't want to do it coming not, out of the corner. Not coming out of the corner, no. not in the middle of the corner. No. Here we go with group number two, the 32 Dallas Daniels. This is his second run, his second race with us here in the production twins class. He won the Atlanta Super TT. He'll be on the 32 bike. 223 Jeffrey Lowry, 161 Casey Cisco, 60 is Nick Armstrong, 90 is Brandon Newman, 117 is the coal miner Jordan Harris from Pennsylvania. Garrett Wilson's on the 16. 30 is Brock Schwarzenbacher. 22 is Mitch Harvitt. Uh, Harvitt, uh, Harris, 
Wilson. I mean, there's a lot of guys from PA in this class. Garrett Wilson from Milford, Pennsylvania, doing for Gringo Loco Racing, the Skate Power Sports. This class is full of Pennsylvania riders. Here's Dallas Daniels out front. He's from Mattoon, Illinois, on the 32 Estenson Racing Yamaha. Part of the FBI. Fast boys from Illinois. See if he can get up there. Give me quick times the two five point six four four. Two rounds of qualifying up next to be the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Class. Take a look back through the field. There's the two twenty three of Jeffrey Lowry. He is a good machinist himself. He's making a lot of wheels that a lot of the racers are using today. Yeah, they, and they are not only good looking, but they they work. Yeah, they work absolutely. Different weights. And they are beautiful. There's the one sixty one KC Cisco. 161 again doing double duties right for Bob Barry and Jim Turchilla. That's the motorcycle that Jim won in a raffle. That's so cool. I love our sport. Yeah, that is awesome. There's a little bit look back. There's the 60 bike that you're talking about earlier, Tommy. That's the Yamaha that uh, Nick Armstrong is riding right now. He's designed that most most of that motorcycle has been designed by him. Yeah, it's got a shock that comes. Uh, it's not in the center. Uh, model shock is off to the side. And the radiator is almost on right, the side, on right? The side as like well. it, right where the number plate would be. Correct. Completely different configuration than anybody else is running out there. And uh, Nick when, engineered it. When I was riding the Yamaha back in the Super Tracker days, my left number plate, maybe, yeah, my left number plate was actually my fuel tank. Is that right? Yeah. But it, it helped put the fuel and, and the on, weight no, closer the to the ground when you yeah. slid in the corners. There's a 90 bike of Brandon Newman. And there's a look back at the coal miner right there, Jordan Harris from Pennsylvania, the 117. He's on the RC, RRCF Racing Iowa City break bike. Checkered flag is out here. Group number two of our production twins presented by Vance and Heinz class. There's a checkered flag coming out. Looks like Raymond Rizzo. Is that Raymond? Yeah, Raymond's out there throwing the checkered flag. That's cool. Give Big P a little bit of a break. That was it for qualifying. Corey Texter at the top spot with, after the first round. 25.644. Chad Coast is second. Ben Lau is third. Dalton Gauthier fourth. Dallas Daniels gets all the way up to fifth in his second go around. His first oval in the production twins class. Twins class. That's Impressive. Up next, we'll have our Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. Again, if you fans are here in the grandstands, you can upgrade to a pit pass uh, to go to the outside turn number four. You can uh, pay a little extra to get into the pits, and you can meet all the riders. The Build Train Race Program is the Royal Enfield tent just into the pits to the left. Ricky Rackman is going to talk to all these women who have built and maintained these motorcycles themselves. I like they all look different, and it's not just the paint. They, I mean, different yeah. handlebars, different gas tanks. Correct. I, I, man, I love what they're doing. I love this program. And all the motors, though, are based, they're stock. Or uh, can the, they do The INC 650s, yes. yes. And, and they all have the same budget. They can go out and get sponsorship if they choose to. And here they come. Some of them have a little bit different leathers. Like, you know, Sarah Dixon's out there in those bright blue leathers. I really like those. And I like her, her bike. Looks to me more like uh, maybe an older style flat track bike than some of the rest of them. Yeah, and that's uh, that's what they were going for with the gas tank and the tail section on it. It's, uh, I think it's, it's a sweet looking ride. You know, and some of those gas tanks actually look like the real smooth, almost like a teardrop, like an old Triumph gas mm -hmm. tank. Yeah, I, I mean, I just like the whole program. If you get a chance to go in the the pit area, you know, you can you can upgrade to get a, a pit pass early, or you can wait around and go to the open paddock area at 7:35 to 8:30. Then you can go in the pits and meet all these women riders who maintain their motorcycles. And you can meet all the rest of the riders, too. Again, we're, we'll do that uh, after a lot of the racing is actually in the books. After our open pit area, we'll have three main events after that. This is the Royal Enfield. This is their qualifying race. I didn't realize that. We're racing right now. Man, what are we doing just talking about things? Uh, I'm just following your lead. Tommy's over here beside himself. 31, Jill DeShane, 33, J.C. Jones, 13, Sarah Dixon, 6 is Mallory Lee, 21 is LeBaire, uh, 27 is Kiskella, 327 is Gabby Hughes, and the 88, Lana McNaughton. This is a race, so here we go. Sarah Dixon, again, who didn't get any practice in yesterday, she's out in front. Here they come on the front straightaway. This is our first race of the day. And she's Ohio bred. That means she's fast? I, you know, I, you know, we're talking about all these PA guys. I wanna you want to you want to fit in a little bit? Yeah, I want to fit in a little Ohio. All right, down the back straightaway, the 13 in front. She finished up on the podium, and uh, when we raced up at Joliet, she's starting to finish up a little bit higher on the podium for today here at round number two for our build and train race program. Sarah Dixon out in front, Jill DeShane right there in second, J.C. Jones third. Lap number two going in the books. This is a qualifying heat race for the build and train race program. 
Jill Deshane now goes to the top spot. The 30, uh, the 31 has the fastest lap, but she hasn't got by. She's coming up the inside. Not able to make the pass. She's trying. It's the 13 and the 31. Jill Deshane took the win at Joliet. She's trying to make the pass. Sarah Dixon holding off. Sarah actually finished third at Joliet. Up the inside goes the 31. We got a new leader going to turn number one. Can Sarah come back under the inside? We'll see. Now she has somebody to go after. Sometimes it's easier to be the second place rider. They're side by side on the back straight away. Here comes the 13. She backs off. She knows it's only a heat race. This is our heat race out here for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. The 31's getting off the line, really off the corners, really good. Here they come to the start finish line. White flags waving in this heat race. There's only one heat race for these ladies. See on my list, it's supposed to be a, a, a qualifying. Here, it's supposed to be a semifinal a little bit later on. So I'm a little bit confused, but I think we'll treat it as a race. It says qualifying on here, but I, they lined up like they're racing. Yeah. I thought we were racing. Man, man, I was so excited. I thought we were racing already, Tommy. So we're not racing. I guess not. Checkered flag is out. Jill Deshane has the quick time. 28.243. I thought we were racing. They acted like they took off the starting line like well, they we're did. racing. They, 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 I think they just gave them a... A practice race. A practice race. That's okay. Practice race. You know what? All together. Oh, oh, watch out, Sarah. Whoa. She almost ran into the back of the 31, it looked like, right there. Jill Deshane, quick time out here. That's the 31 bike. 28.243. That's a little bit quicker than the 31 was. Here, watch out. Okay, so the 30, 31's off the gas already. Man, she did almost run into the back side of the 31. So that is it. We got a little bit of a break in the action. The Honda Talon's going to be coming out. The Honda Talon's going to come out here real soon. Tommy, the track is great. Have you got to go out there and ride in that brand new Honda Talon yet? I have. I did, uh, I think it was 2019 at uh, Lima, and Al Lamb was driving. And uh, I'll tell you, I, we were, I was watching the speed limit, uh, speedometer. Yeah. We were doing 80 mile an hour down the back straightaway, and he pitched it into three, and I'm holding on. It's one thing to drive. It's another one to just sit there and I'm, think, oh. I'm not a good passenger. No, me neither. No, absolutely not. So the Honda Talon's going to come out and put a few laps onto the racetrack right now. It actually helps put Dunlop rubber onto the racetrack. So we're going to see the Honda Talon coming out out of here. It's the brand new side-by-side, -side, one of the most anticipated side-by-sides uh, to ever come out. Yesterday, Ricky Rackman got to go for a ride in it. Let's check out how Ricky enjoyed the riding in the Honda Talon. You come to the progressive American flat track races, you see the Honda Talon out the track. Well, yesterday, I got the opportunity to ride with Richie Morris in one of these at Port Royal, and it was pretty cool. Take a look. Okay, we're pulling out to Port Royal Speedway. We've got our buddy Richie Morris driving here. This is the official side-by-side -side for Progressive American Flat Track. This is the Honda Talon Race Edition. It's a thousand cc. Honda's actually been in the game of making these side-by-sides for a while, but this is one is made purely for pure fun. And we're going to see Port Royal almost the way the riders did with Richie. All right, guys. <laughs> the thing that I think was so incredible about being in the Honda Town is, first of all, this, this thing has got a lot of power. It's got a thousand cc's, but it's got a lot of power. But we get real close. That wall comes up on you so quickly. And when we were going around the turn, I already started making up the social media posts about the horrible things that could happen to me. Obviously, the vehicle was more than capable. Richie Morris is, is great behind the wheel. That was insane. That was so much fun. Cool. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. That was so much fun. After I got out of the Honda Talon, Cole Sabala and Trevor Bruner got in. Now, I was really curious on their take because A, they're going around the track in four wheels, and even more importantly, they're not in control. When they're racing flat track, you know, they are in control. Here, they are a passenger. Uh, they, they might be a little bored, but we'll see. Sometimes the passenger seat makes it a little less boring. <laughs> <laughs> One of the cool things was 
I was standing right outside the turn, and when they came around, you could pretty much see them, A, holding on really tight, and B, like, grinning ear to ear. They were really having a good time. And look at these guys. These guys are swaying laughing. I'm curious about a couple things. What is it like not being in control and being a passenger? I mean, it's it's scary and exhilarating at the same time. I think that was the most fun I've ever had on four wheels, to be honest. <laughs> really? What did, you, what did you think? I hated it. I love being in control, but I mean, Richie did a, a heck of a job driving. Like that was that was super fun. So, is it anything like the perspective you get on a motorcycle? I mean, for me, I've ne never raced flat track before. You know, I kind of try to picture it, but is it any of the same sensations, or is it just completely different? Oh, it's completely different. There's a hell of a lot more power, and uh, Richie definitely does some driving, and uh, you know these things. These things are a blast. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been in one, and uh, yeah, they're they're a blast. <laughs> I felt like it handled super well. Yeah, like the way it, it, it felt like it was stuck to the track, like glue. It, it had like a gangster lean to the right. It did. Like, you were like shoulder it. leaning it, like and yeah. didn't let off, and was just full pin all the way around. Yeah. Like it was stuck. It was just awesome. And it is kind of weird being out there and having Richie completely in control, right? <laughs> yeah. We did a great job. Like, 10 out of 10. I'd go again. Let's go. Here we go. It's Trevor Bruner and Cole Zabala and the Honda Talon. Man, the Honda Talon looks like a whole lot of fun. We'll take a look at some of our laps that were done earlier today. That's the Honda Talon. It's the most anticipated side-by-side -side coming out. When we come back, we'll get on to the track with qualifying next here at the Port Royal Half Mile. Dangerously. KTM, ready to race. With over 300 world championship titles, for 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports. For road or track, dirt or asphalt, when you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at torcheyewear.com and click on our free home try-on program. Tired of replacing your battery every year? It's time to buy the world's best lithium battery, the Pulse IPT. With up to 1,200 cranking amps and unmatched reliability, there's no better battery for your bike. Visit Full Spectrum Power in the paddock today or on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Start something. Power everything. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, -side, and touring motorcycle. Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit kicker.com. 
Motion Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Profil Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the Profil Air Chuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. Or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach with a Profil Air Chuck to manage your tires. Get yours at MotionPro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. A race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. Track prep going on out here at this beautiful half mile. It is the Progressive American Flat Track Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. Doing a little track maintenance right now. It's early on in the day when we get back on the racetrack at 445. Mission Super Twins qualifying round number one will be up next, followed by the other three classes, their second round of qualifying. And then we'll have opening ceremonies at 6 p.m. Eastern. After that, we'll get into our semifinals, our build train race main event, the Mission Super Twins Challenge. Open pit area going on 7. 35 to 8 30 here today and then our three main events in our premier series classes so earlier today ricky rackman caught up with one of your pennsylvania riders and his grandfather is actually glenn Fitzcharles, who is in the national sprint car hall of fame so Fitzcharles put put many laps around this racetrack he's here with us today but earlier today ricky rackman caught up with our production twins points leader and former champion of that class Corey texter let's check it out Sorry, Corey, not having a good day today. Nice of you to join us. Not, I'm just not feeling, just not <laughs> feeling it. But you know what? We were in Pennsylvania, a place with so. Can you smell it? The racing history. Can you smell that, Corey Texter? I smell it. it smells like smells, <laughs> it smells like, like home. It smells like dirt. It smells like it smells home. Smells a little bit like dirt. So, before, Corey, even though when it comes right down to it, I think I probably known you longer than any other person at her in flat track that is true so that i knew true. you before i knew of your sister which is very uncommon yes because you've always been shana texter's brother but now it's really good because with four wins you're cruz's dad yeah that kind of that transition happened unplanned really i thought eventually i'd, I'd get my own like kind of deal there but no i just went from shana's brother right to Cruz's dad. Like, people come to my pit literally now to get Cruz's autograph and to see Cruz. Wow! But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, it's cool. You're not complaining about that. No, nah, it's, I mean... It's you a don't feel neglected about that? No, nah, we're a family. It's a family. But way. everything else you do? Yeah. You feel yeah. neglected? You feel like they're not paying you attention. What would you rather be? The media darling with a win or people ignore you, which they don't, and have four wins for the season. Uh, you've said it best, and I've, I've said that to people. I could care less about any of that stuff. You're I just a liar. Want, I just want to win. I um, agree about that part, but I think that you feel that they're neglecting you, even though they're not, Corey, because you're on fire this year. You are doing so good, which I like to see because I like you, Corey Texter. You've got four wins, but you still feel that you're not a story. Um, I don't necessarily – the story thing doesn't bother me as much as, like, I've been kind of the underdog guy my whole career. Even when I won a championship, people were like, you know, saying I lucked into it, you know. And then, and then last year we had such a grind um, throughout the year, and we did, we finished off the season really strong. And I put in a lot of work for this season. And yeah, again, it was just um, I probably wasn't a title favorite coming into the year. And 
I don't know if I use that as motivation, but I definitely keep receipts and I, I, I notice that stuff. But at the end of the day, I just want to win. I could, I could care less how many stories I'm featured in, how many times AFT posts my picture on social media. I just want to win races. And that's the, it's kind of how I've transformed over the years. Cause I used to be more about that marketing stuff and trying to, trying to get my name out there. And now I could care less if they talk about me at all, as long as I win at the end of the day. Well, just remember, you are doing our show today, but Brandon Price canceled, so we called Corey <laughs> Texter up today. The thing is, Corey Texter, you are out there. You have got a podcast, which I listen to, and you know I listen to it because I Love even it. mentioned something yesterday, and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember hearing that, and I really like, I like your podcast. And you are really getting yourself out there. You kind of have to be a marketing machine, don't you? Well, I did. My, at the start of my career, I didn't have that natural talent to, to get sponsors and get rides. So, yeah, I went to college for marketing and business, and I learned uh, I learned from other riders that were really good at it. And I've just sort of learned myself to uh, market myself so I could get good rides and, and get to that level. I always My dreams growing up was being a professional racer, and I didn't have that natural talent that a lot of these guys have. And it's been a grind. It's been a lot of hard work to get where I'm at now. And now it's transitioned a bit where I feel I have that talent and I can go out and get results. And I think people still think it's a fluke a lot. It's like, man, they're just waiting for me who? to kind of. Who? You've got four wins this year. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be back in real world right now. A couple races, you might lock up this championship. People aren't going to say it's a fluke. But you know what? If that's what motivates you and you've got four wins, let them. Let them be the people that are poking the bear. Let them be the people that are they're motivating you because you're doing good. And let's talk about a little bit about the bear. The bear is a good nickname. Corey Texter is the bear. It's kind of on. It's ironic, really. I don't necessarily think I'm the bear. Like my personality is pretty much the opposite of a bear. Like they're pretty predictable animals. If you read about them, they're social, and I'm not any of that really. It's just an ironic nickname that. I, I got in an argument with another rider back in the day, and I just walked away, and I said, you're going to poke the bear. It was just like the first thing I thought of, and um, I kind of just run it now out of irony and because it triggers people. Like, it really gets people fired up that that's what my nickname is. It's so good, though. I, just I like it. the bear. I think the bear is, a, is just a great nickname. So let's talk about where we are right now. We're in Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Posse. Is this a gang you have to get jumped into? Are there initiations? Uh, there's not actually, um, it's cool to be here, Port Royal Speedway, it's an iconic racetrack, my grandfather raced sprint cars here for a long time. That shirt. How bad is that shirt, to have a shirt with your grandfather on it? eBay find, yeah. That is so yep. bad. My grandpa's in the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, and he's in, a, it says PA Posse on the shirt, and it's crazy, the production twins class has a lot of Pennsylvania riders, so this is basically a home race for everybody it seems like but it's extra special for me like i said my grandpa's raced here and i grew up knowing about this racetrack port royal and i've never gotten gotten the race here so it's it's special for me it gives me some added motivation i've never won in Pen a national in pennsylvania i've gotten three podiums you're kidding no i got two that i did year. not yeah. know so it's uh i'd be lying if i said this one wasn't important to me so it's wow yeah. i you know what that 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 was really surprising to me is there a difference when we take a look at the riders and we look at the the Pennsylvania Posse and then we look at, you know, I, I look at Chad Coe's like, okay, that guy's from California. Can you really take a look at certain riders and say like, okay, that guy is a Michigan style rider? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Michigan boys like the party. The the California guys, they got like the long tees, the RVCA tees and van shoes. And then the PA riders, ah, oh, man, I don't know. It's more so the personality. Like um, everybody that races flat track in Pennsylvania, we're all pretty much from the eastern side of the state, and we all sort of have a little bit of attitude. Um, we don't take any crap. We go after it. We get what what's ours, and that's the, sort of the Philly in me. I grew up outside Philly, and that's sort of just our personality, man. We go out and we get it. I we don't really care about feelings or emotions so much, but you know, we want that end result, that end goal. Um, but our style it varies. Like, I mean, I'm a dad. I, I have dad style now at this point. But pretty much there's no, like, major style with PA, right? I don't know. I don't think so. It's green. Yeah. It's very green. It would be pretty cool to see Corey Texter get his I, – I did not know the stat to get his first Pennsylvania win. 
Yeah, I mean, I've won in PA a lot, <laughs> like just growing up racing locally, right. but never an AFT race. Right. And I want to win them all. I could care for racing here in a parking lot or in a cornfield. I just, I'm a competitive guy, and I want to, I want to win. Corey Texter, Tank Slapping Podcast. You should listen to. It's really, really fun to hear Corey hang out with his buddies and tell some. A lot of stories from back in the day, which I really like. So we'll be watching Corey Texter and the rest of the Pennsylvania Posse at Port Royal. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you, too, can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue-green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and sun setting, then you owe it to yourself to check our Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we have been making dreams come true for over a decade. Supporters of American Flat Track since 1999, our team of professionals are ready to help you find your vacation, investment, and permanent new residence in paradise. We're the Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. We understand the challenges riders face every day. As riders, we want to share the road and be seen by motorists. Remaining visible is critical to our safety and well-being. That's why we work tirelessly to promote motorcycle safety and awareness. We're proud to support our community that includes riders of all stripes. If you've been injured in a motorcycle accident, call 1-800-LAW-TIGERS or visit lawtigers.com. The Law Tigers, America's motorcycle lawyers. Welcome back to Progressive American Flat Track Port Royal Half Mile at a lap. A lap uh, I'm sorry, presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. I was looking at these beauty shots. Look how beautiful it is out here, Tommy. Well, it's when I was driving in today, just uh, thinking, boy, my wife would love to see this scenery. So we might have to come back and just drive around. It's beautiful. I, ho I hope we come back next year. I hope this is a regular yeah. on the circuit every year. It's it's awesome to be out here at this racetrack. Uh, we there was a few things that happened since we raced at Lima. Obviously, we rained out last weekend, but another one is some rule changes. I don't want to dive in deep into it until the bullet. Brad Baker gets up here. Minimum weight to race engine motorcycles only race bikes only so minimum weight was changed the flywheel weight was changed and the rear wheel weight was changed so we'll talk about that a little bit later everything that they took the flywheel weight out and added the bike no, weight bike yeah. weight went up that's what you're trying to tell yeah. me the bike weight yeah. went up to 330 so when the bullet brad baker gets up here we'll get a little bit more technical into that the bikes are lining up already right now up first i'm sorry up next will be mission super twins this will be their first round of qualifying they got two rounds of practice and here they come out according to their point settings and they'll be headed this way the one bike is Briar Bauman, 44 is Brandon Robinson, the 9 is Jared Meese, 20 is Jared Vandekoy, 95 J.D. Beach, 92 is Brandon Price, 37 Bronson Bauman, 36 Kobe Carlisle, 67 David Fisher, 27 Robbie Pearson, 43 is James Raspoli, 69 Sammy Albert, and the worm Larry Pegram, who was quick time at the end of the day yesterday, is out there on the 72 bike. He's doing it for all the old guys. He's still got it. He's doing it for us. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put myself in the old guy <laughs> no, category. You're, you're Me and him young. are the same age. No. That, well, he, 48. It's still young. I don't know about that. I don't feel like it. Pat Buchanan's going to be 50 at the end of this year. We were already calling him 50, so <laughs> he probably hates me. They're out there right now. This is qualifying round number one for our uh, Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle. Good look at the number one rider coming out of uh, into turn number three. There's the 44, Brandon Robinson going into turn number one right now. That's the Mission Foods bike. Mission Foods, Roost Systems of Dallas, Texas on the sponsor list of the 44 bike. The price is right. He's uh, he's back up on top. He, he's feeling good. He's he's so he's been so close to his first ever AFT 
premier class win. He just hasn't pulled it off yet today. It could be the day. That was Weesport when he got second to uh, Jared. He did the Devil's Bowl. He was running up there up That's front, right. too. And Williams Grove last year, he's been close a lot of times. And this is his kind of track. Absolutely. Car track, groove track, throttle control track. Uh, maybe have to get aggressive to make a pass kind of track, maybe. And, and he's not afraid to do that. To stick a wheel in there. Absolutely. Jared Meese goes to the top spot. 2-4.912 for the jammer. Jared Meese, again, originally from Honeybrook, Pennsylvania. So we're taking a look back in the pack. There's the 20 and the 95. Jared Vandekoy has been on a roll lately. Moved up to fourth in the point seven. Top three, 24.9, 24.9, Wow. Wow, and just off of that price, 25.0. So, I mean, how close is that on a half-mile racetrack? That's incredible. It's uh if we were in race conditions, they would be in a huge pack. And in practice, Robinson was quickest, 24.92. Price was quickest in the second round, 24.98. And now Meese, 24.912. So it's just anybody. It's just throttle control, getting off the corner, getting the traction to the rear wheel. Checkered flag is already out. It's the jammer, Jared Meese, with a 24.912 is our quick qualifier right now. Quick time, 24.912. Robinson second, 24.948. And then Breyer third, 24.990. That's opposite of how they're running in the point settings. Third, second, and first. And first. How about, how about that? that? <laughs> and they're all right there. So you, uh, when it comes to race time. You, you think they planned on it? No. <laughs> 24.912, your quick time in our premier class. The Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle. That was already their first round of qualifying. Up next will be the AFT Singles Qualifying round number two. So how they finish up in this qualifying round, we'll get the field set for their semifinals. A little bit later on, opening ceremonies at 6 p.m. out here Eastern time. And then we have an open paddock area at 735 Eastern as the singles start rolling onto the racetrack. Max Will should lead him out on the 18 bike. Dallas Daniels second on the one. 15 is Mikey Rush. 17, Henry Wiles. 13, Morgan Mishler. 52, Shane Texter Bauman. 21, Trevor Bruner. 105, it's the broiler, Brandy Kitchen. 48, Trent Lowe on the Suzuki. And the 143, that's Hot Rod Cody Cop, Second generation flat track racer. The yellow flag's out right now. I think that's just to, to warn them a little bit. They did add some moisture to the racetrack, so I just want to make sure they see the racetrack before they get up to full song. Right. Nobody wants to crash on the first lap. Absolutely not. I've done that before. My son Cody, he's, he's, he's good at that. Yeah, he loves to go out there wide open before you can see him in town. And that's one of the twins, correct? Yeah, one of the twins. Which one's older? Uh, Cody came out first. All right. So I guess that's So he's older. the oldest one, yeah. My girlfriend's a twin. Is that right? Yeah. Nice. Is she yeah. older? Ooh, now you put me on the spot, see? Thanks a lot, Tommy. <laughs> Look like at the 15 right there is Mikey Rush. Dallas Daniels out there as well. Mikey's a little bit easier to find. He's got the bright yellow on his helmet. Dallas Daniels back there in about the fourth spot on the racetrack. Trent Lowe at the top spot, 25.242 or 247. That's exactly the same as it was in the first round. 24, I'm sorry, 25.247, identical. Wow, consistent. Absolutely. His last lap was a 25.440, so a little bit off the pace. Now his best lap is a 25.247 for Trent Lowe, the 48. Look at this big group of riders coming off of four. Group of four riders. Now, right now, it's qualifying, but also it's it's a good chance to practice your passing skills, to see where you're faster than the rest of the group. Absolutely. And then also, too, if you get a bad hole shot uh, on your semi, then this is the time to try to try different lines and say, well, if I'm in a pack, where can I go? How am I going to get around these guys fast? Trent Lowe, the 48 Wally Brown Racing Rowdy Energy Suzuki is at the top spot, 25.247. Shane Texter second. Shane Texter Bauman. Maxwell is third, her teammate. Cody Copp is fourth. Tanner Dean is fifth. This is the overall. They got them combined. Now I figured it out. Yeah. I thought I was. I thought I was trying to be super consistent, but the best of this session is Trent Lowe with the 25.355. His overall best is a 2.5. It's a different screen. I'll blame it on the green screen. And I'll have to blame it on this. This is my second time. So oh, are you I'm blaming so it on your assistant? <laughs> <laughs> Checkered flag is out. Checkered flag is waving. Group number one of the AFT singles. Trent Lowe still is our overall fast time. The fastest in this session was a 25.355 for Trent Lowe. They have the combined time screen on my screen right now, so I don't know who's fastest in this second round. But uh, still Trent Lowe is the, at the top spot. Shane Sexter second. Maxwell third. Cody Kopp is fourth. Tanner Dean is fifth. He hasn't been on the track yet for his second round. Morgan Mishler still currently sixth. Mikey Rush, Ferran Cardus, Ryan Wells, and Dallas Daniels. 
All right, let's take a look at a replay. There's pe people going almost five wide here at Port Royal Speedway. This is the white flag lap going to turn one. Here comes Wiles sticking up the bottom of the racetrack. Shana Texter Bauman goes up high. Here comes the third line developing and the fourth line. We got, man, look at all these motorcycles. We're going to have some great racing out here tonight. American flat track here at Port Royal Half Mile. Did you notice there, though, how Henry was coming into the corner and he was, his back end was trailing back and Shana was in two wheels and Shana's time is uh, faster. much, much faster. Yeah, so Wiles was scrubbing a little bit too much speed, keeping yeah. his the back end was coming out on him and Shana was kind of too willing to kind of road race and it was a little bit faster. Second group is on the racetrack, final round of qualifying. James Otts on the 19, Tanner Dean the 38, 99, Kevin Stallings, 124, Hunter Bauer, 26, Aiden Roos, 7, 377, Ferran Carduce. 94 is Ryan Wells, 161 Casey Cisco, 55 Tyler Raggio. Side by side battle on the front straightaway. Looks like the 38, the Dean machine looking up the inside of James Ott. This is Ott's kind of racetrack as well. This, the uh, 19 bike, he's got his. Uh, first career podium at the Texas Half Mile, another car track with a lot of rubber that usually goes down on the racetrack. So Ott's looking good on the 19 bike. He's currently in the 12th position. Fastest lap of this session is at 25.746. His fastest lap earlier was a 25.719. So that's Ott right now in the 12th position. Let's look back at Ferran Cardus in the 55 out there. Tyler Reggio again filling in for Zavala. Casey Cisco just got his fastest lap of the day, 26.028. Still in the 20th spot for Cisco, the 161. Cisco kid. Still not that much time difference between first 25.2 and uh, Casey Cisco at 26 flat. That's eight tenths of, you know, less than eight tenths of a second between the first and the 20th spot. White flag, last lap here of qualifying group number two for AT singles class. up there for the top spot. 38, Tanner Dean trying to get by the 19 of Ott. Ott's not letting it happen. Sometimes in qualifying, that's going to slow you down, too. Uh, you want to get the fastest lap you can from round one or round number two to get you qualified into your semifinal. In the semifinals for the three premier classes will be coming up right after opening ceremonies. After the open paddock area at 735, we'll have our three main events. So, a lot of racing action out here today. Four classes racing with us here in the Progressive American Flat Track Series. Uh, up next will be group number three of the AFT Singles class. For you new flat track fans out here in Pennsylvania that maybe haven't been to a flat track race, AFT Singles means single cylinder motorcycles. Uh, 450 cc's is the uh, bikes. Just like you can buy off the showroom floor. Yeah, I was just going to say production motocross bikes that uh, anybody could buy and then convert them over to uh, flat track. Absolutely. Up next, group number three, the 175, Terrence Santero, 133, David Wigan, 135, Ezra Brusky, 243 is the Jet Jared Lowe, one of our new pro riders, 298, Trent Pickle, one of our Canadian riders, 109, Billy Ross, 156, Jordan Jean, 157, Ian Wolf, and the 103 is Michael here at Hill. This is group number three, final round of qualifying for the AFT singles out here today. Production Twins will be coming up next with their final round of qualifying. That's Brusky on the 135. Ricky Rackman kind of took a liking to him because he changes his hair color for every round of the right flat track. Is that right? Yeah, I did that. Today, cool. today he's like half and half. Sometimes he's a cheetah. I saw some pink in his hair before. He just he just mixes it up a little bit. Makes him different. Makes him different. That's right. Makes him stand out. On now, the and if he was winning, he'd, everybody else would probably do the same yeah, thing. Exactly. Start doing coloring her hair. I remember when Nicky Hayden did some of that. You know, he had like the cheetah hairdo for a little while, and then he shaved his number in the side. Yep. Gotta, gotta do Be a trendsetter. That's it. All right. 135, Ezra Brusky back up to, or on the racetrack right now, is up to the 19th spot. That was his quickest lap of the day, 25.895 for Ezra Brusky, the, the number 135. He's in 19th, but that was his quickest lap he's turned. It's because we're talking about him. That's see there. Brought him some luck. There's Plus, the one, third time out on the track. Yep. 133, David Wigan from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's not on our leaderboard just yet. He's working on it. 175, Terrence Santero is also not on the leaderboard, so they must be out of the top 23 spots. They've got a battle going on at turn number one. I saw Wigan yesterday was actually talking to a few of the uh, veteran riders who are 
Barnes family and was talking about how to come off the corner. He was also going over and talking to Danny Essick, another Tulsa, Oklahoma rider. So it's, it's cool how you learn and share your information with the different people in the paddock area. Absolutely. I, I remember back in my day, Steve Moorhead was my mentor. Really? Yeah, he would always give me good, uh, good lines, tell me to go here, go there. So, uh, how much did that cost? <laughs> that was a freebie. That right. was Ohio boys, right? So yep. we stick together. Yep, that's what I was talking about with uh, Wigan going over and talking to Danny Esley. Right. So uh, white flag is out. Last lap, group number three of our AFT singles. This will set our field for today's race. And Jordan Jean just gets his fastest lap, moves up to the 21st spot to 6.064. In about eight tenths off of the leader's quick time, the 48 Trent Low. Looks like he's going to hang on and be our fast qualifier in the AFT singles class. That is it for their qualifying. Up next, we will have our production twins class. 19 riders going to attempt to start tonight. Only the fastest 16 will make it to the main event. So you need to get a good qualifying effort to get you a good starting pick in your semifinal. And out of those semifinals, we'll take the top eight to the main event. So uh, there's another one of your friends, Ian Wolf, the 157. He's getting. I don't know if he's getting taller or if I'm getting shorter. No, he definitely got taller. I uh, raced with Ian uh, at Western Reserve on the short track uh, okay. a couple of years ago when he was like 14. Yeah, when he was <laughs> about your size. <laughs> yeah. Now he's like 6'3". And, and uh, he was still beating me. All right. Up next, AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. The time to beat is Corey Texter, 25.644. Uh, he was fastest in our first round of qualifying. Chad Coase was actually fastest in the first round of practice. They'll be coming out in two groups, 19 riders. 65, Corey Texter. 79, Dalton Gauthier. 49 is Chad Coase. 62 is on his birthday. It's Dan Bromley. 25, Ben Lau. 68, Ryan Barnes. 44, Cameron Smith. The 10, Gianni Lewis. The 40, I'm sorry, 64, Danny Eslick. And the 71 is Pat Buchanan on the Harley-Davidson XG750. So for you new fans, Production Twins have the black number plates with the white numbers. When we get to the Super Twins, they'll have the white backgrounds with the black numerals. That's how you can tell the different classes. And Production Twins are motorcycles that you can buy that are street lights. Absolutely. And you just you put, put them in different uh, racing frames, put different racing wheels on them. Of course, they can bump them up, you know, bore them out, stroke them out, or just a little bit, make them a little bit bigger, uh, up to a certain restriction, of course. But uh, there's a look at 62, Dan Bromley holding off the 10 of Johnny Lewis. Lewis won the last round at the Lima Half Mile. Spinning up the mile for two. Nine Pennsylvania riders with nine riders in this group with Pennsylvania roots of some sort. It's uh -huh. crazy. So in, in sprint cars, they had the Pennsylvania Posse. I think we're going to use that too here in American Flat Track. Works. I mean, why, why not? not? Yeah, Absolutely. That's right. It works well. Corey Texter still has our quick time, and it's even faster in this round. Corey Texter has the fastest lap of the day in the production twins. The last time by, 25.585. He is on the screen right now going into turn number one at C-Tex on the 65. Chad Coe second. It was his fastest lap of the day also right behind him at 25.666. So the track's getting faster, at least for the production twins riders. Absolutely. Or you think they're just figuring it out? I think a combination of both. Ben Lau, Ben Lau second, Dalton Gauthier third, 25.669, three one thousandths of a second difference between second and third. I'll make that all of them. Yeah. Yeah. This is such a good class. So 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 tight, so competitive. Except for Corey's run away with the point standings. Other than that, it's been great racing. You know, Corey's just been real consistent as the middle of the pack riders are struggling, like we talked about in our storylines coming into the Port Royal half mile. I, I think when uh, James Rispoli won last year, they kind of kindled a little more fire in the Right back, kind of wanted him to get that number one plate. Which Bowley moved up to the Super Twins class. Corey Texter wants that number one plate back. Checkered flag is out. You can see it's a little bit slick going into the first corner. As you mentioned earlier, Wiles was all kinds of sideways going in to try to scrub speed. Shane Texter Bowman was kind of too willing it in, so that's a little bit different lines. Production Twins, look at this. Dan Bromley moved into the third spot right there on that last lap, 25.654. So Texter still in the top spot, 25.585. And the last bike that was just out there into the top five, 25.677 is Chad Coe. So, man, just one-tenth of a second roughly between the top five spots. Yeah, they're all so close. Come race time, it's going to be a whole shot in throttle control. Right up next, group number two, AFT Production Twins, presented by Benson Hines Class. 32, Dallas Daniels. 223, Jeffrey Lowry. 161, Casey Cisco. The 60 bike, Nick Armstrong. 90 is Brandon Newman. 117, Jordan Harris. 160, I'm sorry, 16, Garrett Wilson. 30, Brock Schwarzenbacher. And the 22 is Mitch Harvitt. Here they come onto the racetrack. 
Up next will be the Royal Enfield Bill Train Race, and it will be their semifinal. I've been checking my notes, going back through here. They're coming up with their first race is up next. All right. We'll get it figured out. We'll get dialed in. Last group of qualifying for the AFT Production Twins presented by Vance and Hines Classic in the time to beat, 25.585. Dallas jumped out in front again. Likes leading. Yep, he's a 32 bike. He has one win at the Atlanta Super TT. His first ever time to race American Flat Track on a twin. He goes out there and wins not only in the Production Twin, but also the AFT Singles Class. He's definitely a female. He's the real deal. Like you mentioned earlier, Fast Boys from Illinois, from Mattoon, Illinois. 32 bike, currently sixth, and that was from his first round, his fastest lap so far, just getting up to speed, 26.007. We'll see if we can drop that down just a little bit as we take a look back. There's Brandon Newman and the 161 of Casey Cisco. Cisco kid, a little, little puff smoke. of smoke when they let off the throttle. A little blow by, right? Like it looked like right when he chopped the throttle going into the corner. Keep it nice and loose, and that way it usually runs better before it blows up. <laughs> That's what they say. Goes fastest for it. Let's go. Yeah, as long as it holds out for the rest of the night, you'll be all right. I don't know about you, Tommy, but this track looks like a whole lot of fun to me. I would love to get out there. It's so smooth. Well, Charlie Roberts just won the 60 plus no. vet championship. I mean, if you can stop crashing your motocross bike, maybe you can give him a run for his money next year. I Are you 60? I am 61. Get out of here. Yeah, I think uh -oh. my wife would divorce me. <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzenbacher goes by that rider right there in the bright green leathers. Schwarzenbacher's making a move. Gets by, looks like the 16 bike. Schwarzenbacher currently 16th. Jeffrey Lowry in seventh. White flag is out. The 223 moves up to seventh with that last lap. Jeffrey was a Horizon Award winner back in the day. Yeah, a couple, amateur. couple years back, yeah. yeah, not too long ago. This year, the Nikki Hayden Horizon Award winner goes to Chase Sadoff. He's another phenomenal. He won four championships. He went, he tried four classes. He won four championships. It was a great week last week. Checker flags out. That is it for qualifying for the Production Twins class presented by Vance and Hines. Pennsylvania Riders, first, second, and third. Corey Texter, Dalton Gauthier, and Dan Bromley. Got ben Lau, fourth. Chad Coast is fifth. Dallas Daniel, sixth. Jeffrey Lowry, seventh. Johnny Lewis. Ryan Barnes and Cameron Smith. Up next will be our first race of the day. I said it's a You're race. Sure? According to my notes, okay. according to what they gave me, yes. They made some changes to the schedule at the last minute, made uh, ch some changes after yesterday's practice. But, yes, up next will be our first official race of the day. It's the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. It will be the women riders on the motorcycles that they have built. They're getting ready to come on out. There's a look at how they finished up in practice out here or qualifying for the production twins. Texter Gautier, Bromley, the birthday boy, back there third. Ben Lau, Chad Coast, Jeffrey Lowry. I was figuring Chad would be up there a little bit closer. I think he uh, he had past time in practice, didn't put it all together and qualifying just yet. But look, at, at, at 26, 25, 6, 7, he's not that far off. He's there. A couple little changes. All right. We're going to take a look. couple of looks at this guy sitting next to me, Tommy Duma, TDFJ. Not only is he the official jeweler of American Flat Track, but look at that picture right there. Where's that from, That's Tommy? That's in Louisville, And Kentucky. you're up there on the left? Up there, high and wide. Yeah, Hank Scott. There, oh, oh, look at that. Wow. Where's that one from? That is Troy, Ohio. Troy, Ohio. You mm -hmm. said last week there's, or the last round, there's 88 counties in Ohio, and they all have a cushion half mile. <laughs> They're I all believe you. Girls. That's a great shot right there. That's, you got Harley Davidson Leathers. There you are with your other national number, 62. Where's that one from? That Do you remember? DuCoin. DuCoin. That was my favorite racetrack. Yep. All Louisville, right. too. Louisville's fast, too. All right. Here we go with our first race of the day. It's going to be the ladies from the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. Looks like they're giving one lap to check it out, and they'll stage them up, and we will go racing. Have a starting lineup right here beside me. It looks like possibly the six will be, let's see, we'll just go through the whole field. Uh, six is Mallory Lee. The 13 is Sarah Dixon. 21, Bidget LeBaire. The 27, Neen Kiskella. 31, Jill Deshane. 33, JC Jones. 88, Lana uh, McNaughton. And the 37, three, uh, 327, Gabrielle Hughes. And the 909 is a scratch. That's Erin Ferris. She broke her leg and uh, she's not racing with us today, but she's here to support the other ladies. And again, after, uh, after the, uh, 
the Mission Challenge, the open paddock area, 735. You can go down there and meet these favorite riders. Ricky Rackman is going to interview all of them, talk about their how they built the motorcycles, what they had in mind, talk about the differences in the bikes. They all started with the INT 650. They're allowed to make a, a few certain changes, and they could get sponsorship if they wanted to. But this is time for our first race of the day. This is our semifinal for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. There's Sarah Dixon pulling up to the third spot from the outside. So it looks like the pole setter takes the outside. That's the 31 bike. She had quick time. Or lined up according to how they finished in qualifying, outside to inside. Two rows of motorcycles, eight of them. Are you ready? Let's go. This is a real race. Not like the last time. That was just qualifying. Oh. Last time they just pointed them and they went. This time they're going to use a starting line. I guess so. Here we go. So there's a Christmas tree on the out on the inside of the racetrack. It's got a red, two yellows, and a green. And we're going racing out here at Port Royal. Now Sarah takes a look back. Looks like somebody maybe jumped the line. Maybe not. All, All right. right. Here we go. Let's try it again. Speedway. Long light. Finally turns green. Clutches come out. Shit. Sarah got a horrible start. Oh. Man, she's got to play catch up. About spinning up. Mm -hmm. Leaders at the very bottom of the racetrack. I bet the 31 is out front. Coming off a of turn or two on the back straight. Well, look, they're three wide deeper in the field. The 31 is out front. The 33 is in second. The 31 is Jill Shane. J.C. Jones right there in the two spot. As they get off the turn number uh, four, coming back this way. Here they're on the front straightaway. They're getting up to full speed. The 33 is right there in tow of the leader. Is there any draft done on the half mile? Can you feel it, Tommy? I, no, I, not really. I didn't think I could either, no. so. Just wanted your opinion. What a race we got going on for the lead. The 33 and the 31. Jill Shane out in front. J.C. Jones in second. Bridget LeBaire is back there in third. Sarah Dixon's all the way up to fourth after that bad start. She's moving through the field. She'll work her way up there. She just got a bad start. So they finished in uh, Joliet. The 33, the 31 was the winner. So it looks like the top two spots were exactly how they finished up there at Joliet. This is just a semifinal out here. Oh, the leader gets sideways. Here comes the 33 up the inside. New leader. It's J.C. Jones from Fallbrook, California. Goes out into the lead. The 31's leaving it on down the back straightaway. Oh, she has to check up. Ooh. Great racing, huh? They're getting excited. Yeah. I'm getting excited. The 33 out in front, J.C. Jones out there. Met her about four years ago at the Springfield Short Track. She came out there and, and uh, uh, was was battling as an amateur rider. Now she's up here in the Royal Enfield Built Train Race Program. She's a good rider, number 33. She looks great. she got great form. 33 in the lead. That is J.C. Jones. D Jill DeShane in second. Sarah Dixon has got up to third now. I don't know if she's got enough time to track down the leaders or not on that 13 motorcycle. Looks like the top two have pulled away by a little bit more than a straightaway. Yeah, she'll have to put her head down. But this is just a, uh, a semi semifinal. Yep, right. exactly. This will get their starting lap for the main event. So it's not and no problem. So the white flag is out. It's still the 33, the 31 in second, Sarah Dixon in third, LeBaire back there in fourth, Mallory Lee is your top five. Last lap of our semifinal for the first race of the day. It is the Royal Enfield Build Train Race semifinal. All top three are all in the, their times are pretty close, 28s. 28.1, 28.5, 28 28.7. JC's got a quick lap. Her best lap's a 28.055. Last lap, checker flags out. There's your winner, 33, going to take the win. That's JC Jones from California. Jill Shane will finish up second from Rogers, Minnesota. Sarah Dixon from Ohio right there in third. Bridget LeBaire will be credited with fourth. Again, that will give your starting lap. Those four will be on the front row of tonight's main event. Fifth place will be Mallory Lee on the sixth. Neen Kaskella will be sixth. Lana McNaughton will be seventh. And Gabby Hughes back there in the eighth position. That was our first race of the night. Up next will be the uh, Mission Super Twins qualifying round number two. So they get one more round to go to set their field for today. What's also important for the Super Twins will be the top four, you know, going on to that mission challenge. So everybody wants to get on the front row. So we'll take a look at the replay from the Royal Enfield Bill Train Race Program. This is the pass for the lead. Here they come on the front straightaway. Looks like the leader's going into turn number one. And J.C. Jones drops to the bottom of the racetrack. Oh, she got a little bit sideways going into turn one. She went up the yep. racetrack. Open up, up the door. But... The 33 has to be in the right spot to capitalize on that, right? Right, yeah. If she wasn't right there going on the inside, then uh, Jill may have been able to uh, save it. There you go. So that was our semifinal for our 
Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. Again, you guys can go down there and, and pay a little extra to get in the pits if you want to stay down there and watch the races and check out what's going on in the pits. You can pay a little extra to do so uh, right there at the pit gate going outside turn number four. Here we go with our last round of qualifying for the Mission Super Twins presented by SNS Cycle. Your quick time right now is Jared Meese, 24.912. Here they come onto the racetrack already. This is our final round of qualifying. The one is Briar Bauman, 44 is Brandon Robinson, 9 is Jared Meese, 20 Jared Vandekoy, 95 J.D. Beach, 92 Brandon Price, 37 is Bronson Bauman, 36 Colby Carlisle, 67 Davis Fisher, 27 Robbie Pearson, 43 James Raspoli, 69 Sammy Halbert, 72 is Larry Pegram. Final round of qualifying for the night. After this, we'll have some break time. we got opening ceremonies coming up at 6 o'clock a little bit later on. Opening ceremony 6 p.m. Eastern. Briar's trying to run the bottom of the racetrack right now. Now he goes up to the middle. He's looking pretty smooth. He's got that number one plate. He wants to be the three-time defending Grand National Champion. Man, how cool would that be? Yeah, that's uh, that's a great feat. One one is enough. Mm -hmm. Hard enough, let's say. Never exactly. enough. Not a lot of people get to run the number one plate in American flat track. Briar's done it two years in a row. Drifts up the racetrack up to the high line. Now's the, the time to check out the track for the last time, right, before we have a little bit of break. Right. And so you're, again, still searching for the fastest line, trying some different lines to see what's going to work. And obviously, uh, from the last time they were out, they did some setup changes, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to see if it works better, works worse, go back. What are we going to change for later on? Last round of qualifying. Briar Bauman just throws down a quick lap, 25.526, not as fast as he was earlier. Look at this, the top three all just went their fastest lap of this session. Jared Misa, 25.484. Brandon Robinson, 25.504. Briar Bauman, 25.526. So uh, no change up on the leaderboard, but they're getting faster as they get more lap. You know, more laps underway, maybe a little bit more heat in the tires, possibly getting some more traction. But they're still a half a second slower than what they were in the last session. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. White flag is out. This is it for qualifying. Jared me still your quick time. What I'm surprised is, is Brandon Price back there fourth. I expected him to be a little bit higher up there, but like he was yesterday. He should be there. He'll get there. Yep. There's a look at Price. Checker flag is out for your leader. Off the final corner comes the rest of the riders out here. Checker flag coming out. J.D. Beach, our highest Yamaha. Six fastest. Six quick. Colby Carlisle, 10th. He was quick earlier, but didn't maintain that speed. But then again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but uh, if you look at the times, they're all very close from first to 10th. To mm -hmm, absolutely. So 24.912. Jared Meese will be your quick time. There's a look at Brandon Price a little bit deeper in the field. Uh, Jared Meese is your overall Fast qualifier, 24.912. Brandon Robinson second on the 44 bike, 24.948. Breyer is third, 24.990. Brandon Price, 25.075 is fourth. Davis Fisher, fifth fast time, 25.114. J.D. Beach is sixth. Bronson Bauman, Jared Vandekoy, Pegram back there ninth. Colby Carlisle, James Raspoli, Sammy Howard making his return back to flat track, 25.390. And Bugs Pearson is 13th, 25.405. That is it for qualifying. We're going to take a commercial break, and we got a lot going on. Opening ceremony is coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern. Rider autograph session at 735. We'll be back to the Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley-Davidson. Memphis Shades brings you a whole new level of style when it comes to motorcycle windshields and fairings. The quality, style, and selection set these products apart from the pack. Memphis Shades designs and builds all windshields, fairings, and hardware in-house. Raw materials in, finished goods out. Made in Memphis. Style that works. Dunlop is the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. We make tires in America for racing and street racing such as our credit-worthy Progressive American Flat Track Spec Racing Tire, the DT4, and the DT3, which is now the Street Legal K180. Learn more about Dunlop Tires at DunlopMotorcycleTires.com. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at Progressive AFT's Trackside Merchandise Booths and is the official magazine of Progressive American Flat Track. For more information, visit SideburnMagazine.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. 
Drag Specialties welcomes race fans. At Drag Specialties, our commitment to riding is a way of life. That's why we want to remind you that when you're ready to tackle maintenance or add performance and style to your ride, make your first stop a local dealer who stocks products from Drag Specialties. Drag Specialties. Enjoy the races. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sport side-by-side of American flat track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1,000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. Klotz Synthetic Lubricants is proud to be the official lubricant of American Flat Track. Family owned and made in America since 1959, Klotz has built its reputation by answering the call of racers and performance enthusiasts who won't settle for anything less than superior synthetic lubricants. Racers and performance buffs around the world rely on Klotz to get them to the checkered flag. Order today at klotzlube.com. With over 300 world championship titles, For 44 years, Olean's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olean's products to elevate your performance, you get Olean's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high-action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you, too, can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high-performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited. We support the sport. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, and touring motorcycle. Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit kicker.com. Hello, welcome back to Progressive American Flat Track Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. We're just checking out what's going on out here. And again, at 6 o'clock, we'll have opening ceremonies coming out here today. At 7.35, we'll have the rider autograph session. We'll open up the pits for all you fans to go meet all of our riders. And at that time, Ricky Rackman will interview our Royal Infield Build Train Race riders. They're just inside the pitter. You can do an upgrade and go into the pits right now. Earlier today, Kristen Beat caught up with the number 44 from Oxford, Pennsylvania, Brandon Robinson. Let's check it out. Dallas, Texas, Mission Indian Rider. Brandon, this has been your strongest season to date. It's not a breakout season because you've had great, great finishes in your career, but definitely the strongest season to date. Uh, what, what is it that has stimulated this recent success? Man, I think it's just a combination of things between uh, having a good team, being in the right place. Just uh, my team owner, Jerry Stinchfield, is an awesome dude, supports me 100%. Ben Evans, my crew chief, uh, the dude's pretty fun uh, fun to work with. So uh, it's, it's making my job not feel like a job right now, and I think that's the best scenario for any racer. Traditionally, the championship 
in the last two seasons at least, it's been a two-horse race. It's been Briar and Jared, and now you're inserting your name into this conversation, and you're a threat for the championship. The points are not far spread. You could easily attack, and this could be your first title. Has that sunk in yet? Um, I wouldn't say it's sunk in. I mean, that was the game plan was to be here, you know, in the off season, that was that's what we worked all, so hard for all all winter long for. And uh, man, Jared and Briar have been on it. Knock it off, Ben. Chill out for two seconds, Brandon. What has traditionally kind of been a two horse race in the past two seasons, at least between Briar and Jared, you've inserted your name in the conversation. This could be your your first title. You're within reach of what could be your first championship. Has that sunk in yet? How does it resonate with you? Uh, I'm trying not to think about that stuff too much, you know, one race at a time. Um, that's kind of what we preach, you know, all week long and try to come to each race and win. But, uh, yeah, Jared and Breyer have been on it the last couple of years. I mean, no doubt they've kind of set the standard, the bar per se. And uh, I guess I'm somewhat of a numbers guy, so I look at that stuff and I'm like, hey, I got to win X amount of races, podium X amount of times to be in this hunt. And, and uh, we really put a lot of work in this winter with my trainer, Dick Tibbetts, and um, you know, my entire team and, and developing the bikes a little bit farther and trying to get them better for myself. And, and uh, trying to be healthy, uh, that has been kind of one of my asterisks, I guess, in my behind my name for my career. So yeah, there's always. I feel like in the past, like injuries have plagued your seasons. You had great showings, but those injuries kind of creep up on you. Um, you mentioned in conversations with me that you started working with a mental skills coach, Dick Tibbetts, and it, some of that preparation, some of those conversations have maybe helped you this season. In what ways have have you been given the tools to be a stronger rider this year? Uh, it definitely tell, helps working with Dick, and um, it, it's just kind of helped put stuff into more perspective for myself and trying to keep calm and, uh, like I said, just taking one race at a time, trying not to overthink stuff, and especially going to tracks that I've had not good results in the past and overthinking and going in thinking I'm going to suck kind of deal. So uh, just trying to go in with a good frame of mind and, and you know, try to win everywhere we go. Do you think people sometimes underestimate you? Um, I would say sometimes. You know, I think I've uh, – I've shown flashes of, you know, brilliance, I guess, per se, but uh, never put the whole shebang together, never really had uh, the consistency. But uh, this year we've been pretty solid almost everywhere we went. So I'm um, trying to break that streak and trying to break, you know, people's mindsets of me and, and trying to be one of those guys that they're scared of when they line up next to me. So <laughs> Lima was one of the, I mean, to me, it was just heart pounding. One of those really good races that you look back and you're like, man, like, I want to watch it again. What was that race like for you? Um, and specifically the battle between you and Briar. Uh, it was an awesome battle. Uh, not the way I wanted the race to go, obviously. Uh, you know, I uh, wish we were on the top step, but it was it was a great battle. I mean, uh, you couldn't ask for much more of a, of a race, um, you know, in the Super Twins class. And you know, when it comes down to the last corner, last lap of a race, and, you know, we're, we're dicing it up, it was pretty badass. But, um, you know, definitely, like I said, not the way I wanted it to go. I wanted to break away earlier, and I think Briar knew that. And uh, the track changed just enough that uh, – he kept me in his sights, and I was able to get back on my wheel there, and, and we went at it for a while. So it was, it was pretty wild. It was kind of like a, kind of like a boxing match out there. We were just kind of sizing each other up the entire race, and uh, last corner I took a big swing, and it didn't work. So, <laughs> is there still beef between you and Jared? Uh, not beef, really. But does it feel weird, like when something like that happens on track? Like obviously, these guys are all friends. They all talk. They they see each other at the airports. But then when a guy kind of races you, what you interpret it as being, you know, a little aggressive, um, is, is it weird? Like, do you still talk to the guy? Do you guys get texts? Like, what changes? And, I, I mean, be real with us. Like, is there beef? Like, would you invite that guy out to dinner? I mean, I guess he's still invited to my wedding, so. <laughs> but, no, I mean, no real beef. You know, I, I, I stay pretty secluded. I don't really talk to many guys as it is. You know, away from the track, I'm, I'm, I separate race and and. and you know, personal life pretty big and the only person I really talk to is you know Vandercoy on the side so um, other than that man I, I stay to myself I like you know normal everyday life hang on my cat and my fiance and that's it <laughs> so you, you, we, you we we get the Brandon Robinson that's at home so Brandon Robinson is still a nice guy at home for the yes. most part yes. okay nice guy. Um, that's the fiance. Yeah, well <laughs> she's a nice girl so it, I wouldn't expect she's anything awesome. less she's awesome. she tolerates me <laughs> Um, what is it like to work with Ben Evans, speaking of? Shoot, this guy, wow. Uh, he's a good time, but man, better watch. Uh, you're going to have to bleep out a lot of stuff when you're in our pits if the camera's ever on. Hey, Ben, what's it like working with Brandon Robinson? He's tough. What makes him so tough? Is he picky? No, he's uh, He's actually the easiest guy I've ever worked with. Um, he comes in, it's like, 
you know, the bike's doing this, but if I change and do this, it makes it better. So it makes my job a whole lot easier. See, you're just, he's just a nice guy. Like, he, you, hey, you know what? The bike isn't doing this right, but I can ride it different. Yeah, like that's... He's not doing that today, though. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. Um, so, by the way, that was the nicest, most um, political Ben Evans. I've. That was the most political Ben Evans I've seen in a while. So thank you, Ben, for keeping it PG for us. Um, earlier this season, I, I kind of asked you, what is fueling the fire this season what's kind of lighting this all like there's almost like a wake-up call this off season and you came into this season ready to go you were ready to ride with a great team there's I mean there's a lot of good um factors kind of kind of leading to this success but you said something this season to me you said the window is closing do you still feel that way like do you do you have a timeline for for your career um it's kind of wild to think about but yeah I mean I'm I've uh I definitely feel like, the, like I said, the window's closing. I'm getting old. I mean, really, I'm one of the we older guys. We all are. Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the older guys on the circuit. So, um, like I said, the window's closing, that, that that opportune time where you're in your prime. And, um, man, it's like now or never, in my opinion. You know, we got to win. And I feel like I'm in the best position that I've ever been with my team and environment. And, and why not now, you know? And that's the biggest thing. So it's just. Uh, ben. What's up? Hammer time. It just seems like there's a good vibe. Like, in this pit, whenever I walk over, Ben is having fun. You're, for the most part, smiling, even if you're not content. Uh, there's something about this Roof Systems Dallas, Texas team, um, even with Jerry, that it, it just seems like this team is really gelling this season. Yeah, everyone gets along. We're all on the, on the same page, you know, of the book, per se. And uh, usually we're doing good, so the vibes are usually pretty high. But even when we are kind of sucking, it's like no one's – throwing a temper tantrum everyone's having a good time still we're trying to laugh and have fun we realize at the end of the day that's what the biggest thing about you know what we do is, is going out there and having a good time so um you know as long as the you know as long as we're having a good time and uh hopefully the results will be there you have been dominating the mission challenge this year like that is the brandon robinson show uh what is it about the sprint races i don't know i just uh, i got this like this wedding coming up and that you got to pay for it yeah didn't realize how expensive weddings were so i was like wow. right i know that's always like the shocking thing for me is like you go through and you start picking out the flowers you don't and even you have to pay for flowers my mom owns a flower shop oh that's actually really cool did you ever like did she has she owned it for a long time yeah she's owned it for a while and so she like does she's doing all the arrangements for your wedding oh yeah yeah ashley just has to figure out um the flower she wants so she's my mom's kind of waiting on her yeah that is the by the way good score score for ashley big right. score there um <laughs> This weekend, Port Royal, um, it's a homecoming of sorts for a lot of the guys in the paddock. Yeah, PA is kind of weird. It's kind of the hotbed of flat track these days. So, you know, you always start with the Michigan Mafia, the guys from California, Pacific Northwest. But uh, Pennsylvania has kind of taken over in the last probably 10 years. And it's uh, it's still a very strong district. Even amateur nationals last week in Decoin, a lot of PA kids were up on the front, you know, up on top of the box. So um, it's a good cool place to be. And, and everyone pretty much grew up like 30 minutes from one another, so it's, it's kind of wild to think of that. Something must have been in the water, I guess. I guess. Um, so let's wrap this up with some rapid-fire questions. Favorite movie? You have 10 seconds. Oh, 10 seconds? Go. Super Troopers. Yes. Okay, favorite hobby off the bike? Cycling. Music genre? Uh, I'm the guy that listens to no music going down the road. Wait, you're that guy? Like, you go on road trips without any music? No playlist? It would be 10 hours. Don't even hear a dang thing. I'm just, like, in the zone drive. What do you do? Like, do you talk to people? Listen to the purr of the motor, you know? <laughs> that has to be, like, one of the creepiest <laughs> things I've ever heard. Wait, so you, like, will drive, like, 17... Because you guys sometimes drive, like, from Florida. I mean, sometimes I put, like, movies on, you know, or TV shows. And, like, but just nothing. Have like the sound of the TV show, but I don't really listen to music. That's like a serial killer trait. I feel like when they're like identifying people who are serial killers, like these like murder podcasts. Okay, those are good. I give her that. Like true crime podcasts, I'm into those too. Her. I think like maybe one day if I do something wrong. All right, and with that, we will close this one out, Brandon. It's nice getting to know you. Just a nice guy. Just a nice guy. Brandon Robinson down there with Kristen Beat. That was pretty cool getting some backstory on one of our Pennsylvania riders. Uh, coming up at 6 o'clock, opening ceremonies, Eastern Time Zone. Then we'll get into our semifinals, our Royal Enfield Bill Train Race main event, the Mission Challenge. Open paddock, 7.35 to 8.30 p.m. out here at the Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley-Davidson. We will be right back after this short break.
Hey, is that your stomach growling? Or the sound of thousands of CCs circling the track? Fuel up for race day with Mission Foods. Rev those taste buds with fast and easy to create recipes that are winner's circle delicious. Try some of our mouth-watering tacos to piled high nachos, fresh chips with guac, and more. Start those engines, because Mission has you covered from the green flag to the checkered flag. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Cardo Systems is the official Bluetooth communicator for American Flat Track. Whether on the road or at the track, the Cardo Systems industry leading mesh technology keeps you and your fellow riders connected. Racers like Sammy Halbert rely on Cardo for street riding entertainment as well as a training tool at the track. All Cardo communicators are fully waterproof, dirt proof, and feature sound by JBL. For more information, check out cardosystems.com and follow Cardo on all social media platforms at at Cardo Systems. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world. Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Falcon Tires is proud to be the official light truck tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Choosing the right tire for your truck or SUV is critical. And Falcon has you covered offering highway terrains to all terrains through torture-tested mud terrains. For more information on Falcon's full line of Wild Peak products, please visit us at www.falcontire.com. Explore the full Indian motorcycle lineup, including the all-new redesigned FTR with 17-inch wheels and street-tuned suspension, or the new generation of a classic, the 2022 Indian Chief. For more info and to schedule a demo ride, visit IndianMotorcycle.com. Always wear a helmet, never drink and ride. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to Progressive American Flat Track providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs, from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. And welcome back to the Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley-Davidson. Again, opening ceremonies coming up at 6. Right after opening ceremonies, it'll be 10 minutes. We'll get into the two Mission Super Twin semifinals. RFT Production Twin semifinals, two of those. AFT Singles semifinals. The track is working in nicely. After the AFT Singles semifinals, we have the Royal Enfield Build Train Race main event. Following that will be the Mission Super Twins Mission Challenge. Four laps, $5,000 to win. Open paddock area, 7.35 to 8.30 p.m. That's when Ricky Rackman will talk to our build train race ladies over there. We'll come back at 8.30 with our three main events. Production Twins main will be first, AFT Singles main event, and our AFT Super Twins main event. That's what the rest of the night looks like out here at the Port Royal Half Mile. So a lot of the fans are just filing in now. Earlier today, Kristen B. caught up with our two-time and defending champion, Briar Babbin. Let's take a listen. Briar Bauman currently leading the points in the AFT Super Twins class. Briar, two wins this season. And what I find most interesting about, about this season in the Super Twins class, what has traditionally been a two-horse race is now expanded to a three-horse race. Brandon Robinson has thrown his name into the mix. What has that done for you and the, and the racing? Yeah, so racing, uh, 
we haven't done very much of it, so it's hard for me to kind of judge that, to be completely open and honest. Um, I'm kind of bummed that we've had a month since our last round just because it, it rained out uh, into coins. So the racing's been really good. There's only a few of us, but it's been meaningful and it's been hard for sure. Like, it's really tough right now because there's only so many guys in class and then, you know, a bad night for one of the top dudes is like third at this point or a fourth, so it's it's difficult. Um, but I just want to get more racing in. I, uh, we race this weekend, and then we have a couple more weeks off, and then we do a double header, and it seems like then we get into our chunk of our season. So once we get through all that stuff, then I'll be able to probably make a little bit better gesture or judgment on, on what's going on in the series. Of all the riders, you've been very vocal about not liking the breaks in between racing. What does that do for you? Like, is it hard to get home and get into a flow? For you as a rider, why do you like keeping the consistent race schedule on back-to-back -back weekends? Yeah, so... A lot of people <clears throat> bring up momentum and I'm not a momentum guy but I am a rhythm guy like we we have our trainer Alden Baker and we do the same stuff every week and we want to go to the track the following weekend so and even more so you have a good weekend you want to keep it going and then there's that momentum thing but it's for me rhythm and it's it's just the fact that like I'm back at the track I'm doing the things I know and I'm with the people I know when I uh, when I go home for a couple weeks I get off program quick like I'm not for training I think it's dumb I don't like any of that stuff to be honest with you I do like like casual bicycle rides but I don't like going out and just grinding you know so it's hard to, to get the rhythm going and be be cool with three or four weeks in a row of, of no racing and, and doing the same thing and having to stay like super strict and, and you know get away from or not get away from you know our normal everyday routine so I just I like racing bottom line like whether I'm doing well or not doing good so I just want to be on the track with everyone and at the track with everyone so just always been my mentality I'm not gonna let that change two championships down now um you're an elite company winning back-to-back -back championships but does the championship conversation ever kind of exhaust you where every time we talk to you or every time you know your name is brought up on social media it seems as though the the championship conversation is coming into play does that ever like tire you out like how, how does that weigh on you yeah no honestly it does really i uh i came from being such a guy that just is going through the motions and and just having a good time and now all of a sudden like every single weekend, um, you're supposed to win. Like it's it's at that point where that's kind of, at least that's mentality and the vibe that I get. Uh, I remember I got third in the dash for cash at one of the races this year and I come off and Bronson goes, what happened? And I'm like, what do you mean what happened? That's what all, that's all I had, that's third place. Like that's what I got. And he was like, can you win the main? And I'm like, I don't know. So it does, like you just, the the standard gets raised so high and it's, it's a lot every single week. and. I feel like I've gotten better because I have gone through repeating it in 2020 and now, you know, I'm in, you know, in my third time or my third go around of trying to win a championship. So it's a lot for sure, but it, it's obviously a good position to be in. When conversations come up about the championship, uh, I feel like there's still this, this mentality and may maybe it's just me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're trying to take championships away from Jared Mees. There's this still ownership of the championship that maybe Jared Mees owns the championship and you're taking one from him because he has won so many in a row. And uh, how do you respond to that? Like, how do you feel about that? And I, do you feel slighted at all when, when that is kind of the, the air of the conversation? No, I think it's pretty evident and pretty obvious how hard Jared works. Uh, we all see how bad he wants it. Um, I think that's what makes the last two for me so good is is when everyone when everyone thinks championship they think Jared Meese and obviously this year he blew out his ACL or whatever he did um, it kind of you know he's still not far off he got four points at Atlanta and uh, and yeah so it's not it's not a slight because everyone everyone knows how bad he wants it everyone knows how hard he works and maybe some of us don't work as hard yet we still got it so it's kind of like if you can beat him like you dang near can walk on water, right? Because it's it's Jared Meese. Like, everyone's talking about how... Do you still look at him that way? Even for me. Like, I actually showed up to Atlanta, and when I heard about his ACL, I I can honestly credit him for me not riding that well because mentally I'm like, dude, he's he's top tier. Like, Jared Meese is Jared Meese. He's right there with Scott Parker in my book. And uh, and he got hurt. Like, how is that how is that possible? How is that a thing? That doesn't happen to... I. You know, because I'm, I'm trying to take championships away from him. I'm going to get to the point where people look at it as me doing that to others. Uh, but it's still just my mentality. Like, he is still the dude, you know. I, I, I don't work as hard as I do because, because, or not because of him. Like, he is, he's, his bar is so high that it keeps all of us kind of, kind of going at it. You have to be at that level when you're racing with him. You do. I think that one of the things I do enjoy is that maybe I'm not quite at his level when we have beat him the last two years. But he does continue to just 
grind and that's what the wear is the championship isn't so much i'm just at the point where it's like every week it's like jared and now we have brandon so it's like every single weekend you're you're just there's always someone just at it so when i look at this season so far jared's has his, had his mulligan i think he's finished uh 15th this season brandon with an 11th they've all kind of had their had their mulligan um in years past even while being able to secure a championship you've had a mulligan you haven't had that yet do you expect it do you kind of prepare for that when it comes how do you how do you approach it or how do you handle it um you've been the only rider who's been able to walk through the season um pretty carelessly yeah i mean i think that last year you could almost call a little bit of a perfect season i uh I took seventh at Springfield, which was just me being a terrible mile guy. So I I think last year is as close as I'm going to get. And to be honest, like right now, a mulligan is a lot nicer than it was in 2019 when I would crash or I'd break because you're either taking 18th or 19th where, I mean, J Jared can show up to Atlanta and roll around and, and get four points. Like that's, that's so different than I'm sure like when he broke at Daytona in 2019 and I scored 25 and he got zero or maybe one. Like it's, it's a lot different, but ideally the team works really really hard we don't want one we don't want to have a bad weekend we want to keep grinding at it and keep keep it at the top but it's uh it's motorcycle racing i make mistakes eventually and and the team can mess up things can go wrong it's you know it's not set in stone by any means when you look at this team um you have such a cool crew behind you with the zanatis and uh, they work so hard your program has been truly very consistent this year and that hasn't been the case in years past what do you think attributes that consistency um honestly we all just enjoy being here on like michelle's back she uh she took the year off last year and kind of did some stuff at home and and she's back this year with dave and honestly we just i think we've actually had more fun this year just we got bronson out of the pit honestly that was nice we got him out of here but no i mean it's do you still offer him advice absolutely not no no you're not you're either in or you're out dude no i say yeah, we try and help each other out as much as we can we can but really it's just the the flow of the pit like we, we enjoy the fact, we, I think the biggest thing is we don't take for granted our opportunity to be at the racetrack. That can, uh, that can be taken away so quickly that that's what keeps the flow and the momentum and the, and the enjoyment of being at the track like so high and so like everything we want. So I'm really, really fortunate to have a group of people that understand when I do have a bad weekend or a bad race or a bad session or whatever the case is, they just kind of say, hey, what do we got to do to get better to, to fix that or how, do you, how can you fix it? You know, so... It's just, uh, it's the laid back environment that makes me love being a part of Indian Motorcycle. So when I think of iconic riders and you're kind of, uh, you're, you're entering that conversation. It's being thought of, you're leading the points in what could be your third consecutive championship. Um, I, there's certain words that stand out to me. Like when I think of Scotty Parker, I, I, I think of this fun, vivacious, very lively um, guy. When I think of Jared Meese, I think discipline. That's just the first thing that comes to mind. Um, and when I think of Briar Bellman, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what his word is yet. What do you want your word to be? What do you want people to remember uh, about your your season this year and about your legacy, maybe? Honestly, like, not to be corny or anything, but just enjoy it. Like, uh, I've seen I've seen too many people not get to enjoy it their whole time, and I know how quickly it can be. Like I said, it can be taken away. Even Bronson, as simple as having a factory ride, to now he's working on his own bikes. Like, we're not going to get to do this forever. Every single time we go out there, there's a chance that we don't come back and i guess deep as that is it's just how it is like we we take that risk and stuff so i just enjoy it like i love the fact that i get to come to the races every weekend and maybe that's part of the reason i get so anxious that we have four weeks off between rounds i just want to be here so and enjoy my my racing with my friends so just enjoy it is burning out a concern of yours because that seems to be like a reoccurring theme with some of the things you've told me even just in notes that i've gathered or, or you know times that we've spoken that there are certain guys that can can put out a championship and they burn out and they only get that one championship and there's a lot of guys who just live their life for this yeah. but you're you're very much not like that so how do you avoid burning out and is that kind of a concern of yours one million percent a concern like there's so many things that go on outside of the racetrack that can burn you out super super quick if you're uh, if you're not careful so right now honestly like the biggest thing is the fact that i have a good home life uh, i have some really good friends that they get to come over there like i'm looking more forward to the next couple weeks because i have james Spoli and max whale and hopefully my brother coming over and we're gonna hang out we're gonna golf and we're gonna go ride motocross and although it's still training we're enjoying ourselves and being together and my wife shana she's gonna be doing the same stuff with us so 
the biggest thing is the home life away from the track. Like if you can just get and block out all the stuff and not just be so consumed in it that it that it overwhelms you, I think that's what's going to save me because I I mean I was bummed at the beginning of the year, that's for sure. I uh, there's just so many things going on and there's still things we need to continue to work on, but what things are those? Like what was going on at the beginning of the year? Just uh, my own personal beliefs on how things are run, honestly. Like some stuff I think that my biggest thing is just making sure we have a good racetrack spot that's all I can really say is like if we can have a good racetrack I want to give the fans great great you no know, like Lima Lima was good Lima half mile like let's get it on like that's that's what we need to do that's what that's what people get fired up about everyone talks about how great Lima was so let's just continue to have good racetracks um you've mentioned more frequently this year that you really want to grow the sport. That's been something that even in your press conference interviews and in um, features, that seems to be your platform that you're working from. Why now? Like, why is it important for you now to grow the sport? And what have you been doing to do that? I see that I've actually been super bummed. I, I haven't done that in any way, shape or form, honestly. And it's that's kind of what's kind of had me a little bit burnt out too. Um, it's no secret around the paddock that the sport's in a very, very vulnerable spot. Like. We have nine guys and super twins, and so easily Bronson and Davis can be gone. But luckily, they grind their ass off to, to be able to come out and race. Like, they work on their bikes every day of the week to, to be here. So I don't know how to do it. I've talked about it before. I just wish there was – I just want there to be more opportunity. I want there to be more positions for guys that deserve it, whether it's not having a buy-in to get in the class or there's more teams that are able to afford it and be a, be a part of the series. I just – I don't – like I said before, I don't know how to do it. I want to do it, and that's kind of the part of the reason I've been burnt out. I think everyone kind of sees you as a nice guy in the paddock. You're that nice guy. You're always nice to everyone. You have um, very political, very, very, um, what is the word for it? Very nice responses to, to any question that we may ask you. And it, there's a piece of me that sometimes wonders what he's really thinking, and there's layers to be pulled back. There's a saying my grandma used to say, she used to always say, it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And after Lima, there was a moment when I asked you as a follow-up question, and you had, I had said, did you use the roost intentionally uh, against Brandon Robinson? You were like, yeah. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, that's so strategic, and that's so saucy. And, like, I love the sauce. Like, the sauce is good sometimes. Yeah. Is there a reason why? You, are you trying to be friendly, or is that just who you are? It, do you hide the sauce underneath? Like, there's got to be, like, a – there's got to be a fiery br briar that we don't see all the time. Yeah, I would almost say the fiery briar doesn't show up until – race time honestly like I plan what I'm doing for the races all the time like every second that I'm near a racetrack I'm kind of picking things apart and something like you know Brandon throwing some roost on him but the difference is it's like I do that and then I want to go talk to him about it afterwards we want to talk about the race we want to talk about how good it was between me him Van Coy, Brandon Price Bronson whatever the case was so I get fired up I promise you like Shana would probably tell you otherwise but I always when I get I get a big head for sure, and she'll take me back. But I just always so that may be your problem. You inflate a little bit more. I just try and always remember that this is an opportunity. It's not for granted. Like it can go away so fast. So just gonna ride it out while I can, I guess. You mentioned that it can go away so fast. Who are you without racing? Do you know the answer to that question? Yeah. No, I do. I'm. I don't need to share it, but I do know that. Like I said, I have a really good home life, fortunately, and. I love racing to death, and I love the opportunity to compete, but I also love my, my home life and the things I do with my friends. Hey, welcome back to Progressive American Flat Track. It is the Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley-Davidson. Opening ceremonies coming up at 6 p.m. Eastern, so about 10 minutes from now. We'll get in started with opening ceremonies. It will be short and sweet. We'll have our six semifinals from the three premier classes. Our Royal Infield Build, Train, Race main event. Our Mission Super Twins Mission Challenge. Four laps for $5,000 for the winner. Open paddock area is 735 to 830 out here. That's when you go to the pits and meet your favorite rider. After that, we'll have our three main events for the AFP classes. So a lot's going on out here today. It's a beautiful day for some motorcycle racing up here in Pennsylvania. I'm Scotty Dibbler. We'll be back shortly with opening ceremonies.
The 2021 Harley-Davidson's are here. Check out the largest inventory in Central PA at Appalachian Harley-Davidson on the Carlisle Pike. Anybody's race, who's going who's gonna to want it the most? But it's the lead one. Yeah, but it's the oh, lead. no, he does now. Wow. But it's going to be James Russ Foley holding on for the win. The Juniata County Fair will be held September 4th, 2021 to September 11th, 2021. Come join the fun. Visit the website for the schedule of events. JuniataCountyFair.com. Hold on to your burritos because things are about to get too fast, too tasty. Mission Foods is a proud sponsor of the AFT Super Twins. Add Mission to your race watching snacks for mouth watering race day flavors. Mission Foods, too fast, too tasty. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs throughout America. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com forward slash progressive to see how much you could save. If you ever dreamed of blue skies, fresh air, and blue green water, then look no further. If your idea of heaven on earth includes velvet golf courses, romantic evenings, and sun setting, then you owe it to yourself to check our Southwest Florida's beautiful Punta Gorda and its neighboring areas. At MyDigitalListing.com, we have been making dreams come true for over a decade. Supporters of American Flat Track since 1999, our team of professionals are ready to help you find your vacation, investment, and permanent new residence in paradise. The way this racetrack has turned out, AJ, is incredible. They can run high, low, middle, anywhere they want. We're talking eight riders in contention for this right now. A special thank you to Jake's Golf Carts for their support of American Flat Track Racing. If you're in need of a golf cart, call Jake's Golf Carts for a special racing discount. You'll see why Jake's Golf Carts are known throughout the world for being America's home for custom carts. Come to Port Royal Speedway, racing every Saturday night. Visit the website, portroyalspeedway.com for the full schedule or visit us on Facebook at Port Royal Speedway Trackside Media. On Friday and Saturday, August 13th and 14th, Progressive American Flat Track roars to Weed Sports Speedway in upstate New York. You see how bad these guys want it. In event for all ages, Weed Sports Speedway is hosting two nights of racing as the world's fastest dirt track racers battle bar to bar for victory. The Mission Foods New York Short Track presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycles double header on August 13th and 14th. And welcome back to Progressive American Flat Track Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. It is a beautiful night for some motorcycle racing. We had a long day of practice yesterday. We've got all the practice and early of uh, the qualifying is all in the books here. It's a beautiful night. Five o'clock about 86 degrees. Six o'clock 86.5. It's dropping all the way down to 86.4 degrees at 7 p.m. today. So a beautiful day for some motorcycle racing here in Pennsylvania. It wasn't so pretty last weekend in DuCoin, Illinois. We were scheduled to be on the DuCoin Mile last Saturday. Take a look at all this water. There was over 12.5 inches in a matter of two and a half days. There was absolutely no way we could get the uh, race. Uh, probably still not even today. That is... That is not a pond. That is the parking lot at DuCoin. I heard the airbags, the, the, the things we use in the corners, were floating on the racetrack. There was absolutely no way we could have got that race in last week.
And also last weekend, during the DuCoin Mile weekend, we had the AMA Flat Track Grand Championships. A lot of the pro riders stuck around to help. And there's a look at the indoor facility. We actually ran the short track there, and the TT was ran inside as there was a rain outside at the TT. So we stuck around, raced inside. There's Cage Tadman. There's some of the pro riders sticking around to help out some of our amateur riders. Five days of racing. They raced on the mile. They raced two days on the half mile, one day on the short track inside, one day on the TT inside. 322 races, over 1,000 entries, and I was there for every bit of the action. I had a great time. It's good to see. That was John Nickens right there. Used to be National Number 17 right there. And here's a live shot of Port Royal Speedway out here for today's action. It is round number eight of the 2021 Progressive American Flat Track Series. Opening ceremony is coming up here real soon. We'll go down to that victory podium when, when we're set to go right at 6 o'clock. Don't forget, if you want to upgrade, you can go into the pits. If you want to pay a little bit of extra money, you can go in the pits right now for the rest of the night. We're going to take one more break. When we come back, opening ceremonies, 6 o'clock Eastern. We'll be right back to Pennsylvania. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. Cometic Gasket is the official gasket of Progressive American Flat Track. For decades, Progressive American Flat Track champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championship since 1989. SNS Cycle was born from a passion for racing and has spent over 60 years building high performance for the power sports market. All the while, racing has remained at our core. From the Bonneville Salt Flats to championships in progressive American flat track, SNS is the go to for high performance on and off the racetrack. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler for our eighth year to progressive American flat track, providing championship rings for each class in 2021. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. In 2021, Royal Enfield celebrates 120 years of riding pure. The iconic brand will continue to pursue its efforts in the production twin class and the build train race program. After a successful first year campaign, Roy Lanfield looks to improve on last year's effort. For more information, please visit RoyalEnfield.com. Harley Davidsons are here. Check out the largest inventory in Central PA at Appalachian Harley Davidson on the Carlisle Pike.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the American Flat Track, Progressive American Flat Track, Port Royal Half Mile, presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. It is round number eight of the 2021 season. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track, and we're going to go down to the victory podium. The man himself, the rock star. You may have seen him on MTV on Headbangers Ball. He's a good friend of mine. He's going to take over for opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Rackman. Thank you so much, Scotty Dubler. So excited to be here at Port Royal Speedway. I mean, there's you can just feel the history. I mean, this track has been around since the 30s, and this is a track that a lot of the riders out there are calling home, and this is a track that's filled, from what I've been told, with some of the greatest race fans anywhere. So just to make sure that my microphone is wor working right now, Port Royal Speedway, can you hear me all right? I like it. And also, I want to say hey to everybody that's watching us live right now on Facebook and also on Track Pass. And I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Port Royal Half Mile presented by Appalachian Harley Davidson. Scotty, you don't say Appalachia here. Just so you know, you say Appalachian, right? Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, so let's get this thing started. Please, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation from MRO, the great Raymond Rizzo. Thank you, Ricky. Join with me in prayer, please. Our loving Heavenly Father, what a joy and honor it is to stand before you and say thank you for the many blessings that you give. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless each and every rider, help them to navigate this facility to the best of their ability, keep them safe from all harm, as well as all their family, their crew, their sponsors. We're so grateful for what they're going to do tonight. We're looking forward to an awesome race. And I pray also for our series, all of our leadership, and all those here at Port Royal Speedway. Thank you for everyone that's serving. I ask an extra blessing on them. And for all the fans watching by TV and that are here at this facility, I ask that you'd bless them, keep them safe, enjoy this evening, and also safe travels back to wherever they're going and we'll thank you in advance in jesus name amen and amen thank you very much raymond rizzo now i'd like to welcome up here carla perry she's the marketing and events manager for appalachian harley davidson welcome how are you great how are you Good. I noticed that when I was walking in here, there's a whole bunch of Harley Davidsons that you've got from your dealership. And one of the, there's, there's two that actually really stand out to me. The Live Wire, which is the electric Harley, and the Panamera. Panamerica, yes. So the Panamerica is the adventure touring motorcycle from Harley Davidson. And we do have one right behind the grandstands. I think you should come check it out. If I check it out, can I ride it? You can ask Joe. He might. Yeah, I already tried. Oh, I just thought that would just... Well, first of all, it's really cool. And it's really neat that you're involved with this race here. Yeah, we've been involved since 2018. And it's been, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's also our 20th anniversary at the dealership. So. Well, happy anniversary. Thank you. All right. Well, definitely check out Appalachian Harley Davidson. I said it right, didn't I? You said it correct. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Give it up for Carla Perry. Now, if you've come to the wonderful Port Royal Speedway, and I have to say that uh, this is my first time to this track, and the people here are great, the fans are great, and the people that run this track really do a great job. So I'd like to welcome right now Brad and Steve from Port Royal Speedway. Thank you. We're here with our lead promoter at Port Royal Speedway, Steve O'Neill. And, Steve, we want to talk a little bit about having this event here, the American Flat Track Series at Port Royal Speedway, for the first time and what that means here uh, to the track and the area. Well, uh, what it means to, the, to Port Royal Speedway, we take a lot of pride in this facility. We've had a lot of sanctions from all over the country here. I've had have people ask me for 10 years now, when can you bring the motorcycles in? So this is just another dream of mine to answer what people want around here, so I'm pretty proud of it. I'm really proud American Flat Track came here with us. And I know it being the first time that they're here, you know, maybe a little bit of a learning process for you, but you definitely know a lot about racing here, Steve, and getting good racing events here at Port Royal Speedway. Well, you're absolutely right. I knew nothing about motorcycles before this week. I'm learning slowly, but I do know one thing. I know race fans, and all I can say is, Race fans, including motorcycle race fans, are the greatest fans in the world. And thanks again for being here. I appreciate it. And have fun. 
All right, thank you. Steve O'Neill will hand things back over and get the rest of opening ceremonies underway. And once again, let's give it up to the guys from Port Royal Speedway for bringing progressive American flat track right here. And that one guy that's really loud, especially him. And uh, let's take a look back at how we got here. Here we go. This is the run to the line, and he almost gets Lewis at the finish. And Wiles going to bust through the door and take the lead. Well is coming. Henry Wiles is going to do it here in Lima. Oh, this is spectacular side by side every time around. Robinson down low retakes the lead. Does Robinson have any tricks left? Briar Bauman able to get him back on the last lap and take the win at Lima. One, two, three, go. And let's get to our top five in the point standings. The Super Twins class in the fifth spot from Phil Pop, Kentucky, your Atlanta Super TT winner. He rides for Estenson Racing and Monster Energy on the Yamaha. Number 95, J.D. Beach. Fourth place in the point standings. Five top fours in a row coming in from Mount Gilead, Ohio. It's the Mission Foods, Root Systems of Dallas, Texas entry. Number 20, Captain Chaos, Jared Vanderkoy. Third place in the point standings, two wins this year. Originally from Honeybrook, Pennsylvania, makes his home now in Sebastian, Florida. It is your Indian motorcycle, Progressive Insurance, Rogers Racing, SDI Racing, the number nine, the Jammer, Jared Mees. Second place in the point settings from Oxford, Pennsylvania. Two wins this year in 2021. He's doing it for Mission Foods, Root Systems of Dallas, Texas. Number 44 on the Indian, Brandon the Revolver Robinson. And last but not least, your points leader, two-time and defending Grand National Champion. He also has two wins this year. He's riding for Indian Motorcycle and Progressive Motorcycle Insurance. Number one, Briar Bauman. And let's go back to that victory podium and my partner, Ricky Rackman. All right, please everybody rise and remove your hats for our national anthem. The band Chasing Neon is playing here and Nick Stark is not only from Chasing Neon, the gentleman singing our national anthem, it's his birthday right now. <laughs> Thank you. Please join me. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockies rang glare the bonds bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let's give it up for Nick Stark from the band Chasing Neon. I'm done with this stuff. Okay. 
We are ready. We had a rain out last weekend. I am so ready for the racing. I was here earlier during the practice. The track looks slick. If you look at the standings right now, it is so close. I think we are all in store for a really exciting night. And you guys are ready for that, aren't you? That was absolutely pathetic. Port Royal, I want everybody that's watching us on Track Pass right now, that's watching from all over the world, to hear everybody. Port Royal, are you ready? That's what I want to hear. We're ready for some progressive American flat track racing. Now, back to you, Scotty. Thanks, Ricky. As the bikes make their way out for the siding lap right now, if you're watching at home, it's time to switch on over to Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. It's time to switch on over Track Pass NBC Sports Gold. You can catch every round of the 2021 Progressive American Flat Track on Track Pass and also on NBC Sports. Joining me now in the booth, the former champion in our sport, one of my favorite guys to talk to in the pit area. He just got married last Saturday night. Please welcome the Bullet, Brad Baker. Thanks a lot, Scotty. It's awesome to be here in Port Royal Speedway. This track is beautiful. I, I mean, Pennsylvania is beautiful. Just rolling in here is awesome. Uh, the racetrack is looking really good.